To the underground broadcast, motherfuckers. Cheers, everybody. And yes, I am drinking some water. I don't know if you saw the chat down there, but I kind of got a little fucked up a little too early. I start drinking when I when I'm putting on my makeup, motherfuckers, and that's that's you know that's really early during the day. So, you know, and I fucking uh, I, I I just realized I didn't even. Uh, Little things I forgot about my makeup, but it's all right. I'll get it during the break, motherfuckers. I like to look perfect for y'all. Uh, anyways, let me hit it for you, motherfuckers. Hit it for Gomer Cow, who was here first. Cheers, Gomer. What's your name, scumbag? Gomer Pie. Private Pile, I'm going to give you three seconds. You wipe that stupid looking grin off your face, or I will gouge out your eyeballs and skull fuck you. One, two, three. Shazam. Cheers, Gomer. You're the shit. Thank you for being here early. And shit. Uh, let me hit it for uh, our resident Super Saiyan, Joku. I want to have the world, the world's most comfortable uh, pair of ultra soft. Uh, 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 Cheers, motherfuckers. Thank you for being here. Happy Friday, everybody. Hope you had a great week. Uh, I just wanted to say that uh, thank you all for being here on this uh, Friday evening. Uh, Saturday for whoever shows up from uh, another side of the world. Uh, <coughs> I deliberately stayed sober all day because I wanted to get my first whiff of the MJ tonight. Uh, so I'm going to get really stoned now. Oh yeah, but let's uh let's uh let's get this show on the road, motherfuckers. Don't forget to sign up for our underground our other emergency broadcast. Yeah, I'm already feeling high. Emergency broadcast and the illegal broadcast. Those are the other extra channels. Tomorrow we're gonna try something for the first time ever. I will post a link, a video with links tomorrow, sometime in, in the afternoon or something. And the video will have the link to my Discord. Uh, and we will watch SummerSlam tomorrow at 6 p.m. Um, and we'll, we'll get that done and shit. Uh, yeah, we'll see how that goes. You know, we did get banned already on the illegal broadcast for, for showing. Uh, we were watching a, no, we were watching uh, Money in the Bank. Yeah, yeah. And we got banned. So we'll see how that goes. I don't know the rules at Discord, so we'll see. <laughs> you know us. We might get bad tomorrow. Hey, cheers, Larry Land. Let me hit it for that motherfucker. Cheers. <laughs> if you feel comfortable, let us know where you're at. You can just tell us the state or the country. You don't have to tell us specifics. But uh, happy Friday. Hope you're having a good time. Make sure you sign up for the extra channels in case we do get banned. We got two strikes already. Uh, fuck you, DC. Fuck you, James Gunn. One more strike and our channel's deleted. Uh, we got 90 days probation. Uh, hopefully we don't fuck up in 90 days, but we fuck up every other weekend. So you know how that is. These are the backup channels. Make sure you look for them. Sign up for them. The emergency and the illegal. I got to make some new ones too because, uh, I don't know, just in case. Discord and wrestling tomorrow. You just wait for the fucking video and you'll get a link tomorrow for the Discord. Uh, we'll be watching wrestling tomorrow night. You know how we do. All right. Uh, let's get this show on the road because we got a lot. Oh, Larry Land all the way from New York. Let me hit it again for the motherfucker. <laughs> Are you getting rain? I thought you. Uh, I think there's some rain headed your way or, or they're probably raining right now. Be careful. Stay safe, motherfucker. Stay indoors. Don't be going outside when there's rain. You might get electrocuted or a lightning strike or some shit. Anyways. Uh, 
Let's go with the comments because we got a long, a lot of comments, you motherfuckers. Appreciate you guys for commenting. Our social medias, of course, are at X is at Sunman665, and uh, for IG, it's at the underscore underground underscore broadcast. Fuck TikTok, we do have one, but I am no longer uploading videos because they shadow banned me there, motherfuckers. Uh, so yeah, you know what that's like. Anything you send me on my social medias, as long as it's not porn. Or your credentials, I will show here. You know, anything interesting, you know, memes and shit like that. I don't know. If you said it within time, you said it to me Friday afternoon at 5 p.m., an hour before the show, I might not be getting it on time, motherfucker. So make sure you send me that shit early. Just like Super Saiyan Joku, who sent me this earlier. He says, Order up, son of man, at the Underground Broadcast. My uncle Pete, the plumber. And he even put his handle, Mary, Married to Mary Jane, ML for Life. I don't know what MW for Life is that a gang. Oh, that's badass. He says, stop, he stopped by for a smoke session only to get right for the night. I'll blaze up and stay up. Cheers, mother flowers. Hashtag. Life. Hashtag marijuana. Hashtag Mary Jane. Hashtag. Smoke weed every day. Oh yeah, cheers, motherfuckers. You know how we do. Mm. Let me let me take a look at some of these pictures, Joku. Uh, you sent them to me earlier, so I didn't have a, 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 a time to freaking look at it. So this this is weird. I don't live in a state where this shit is legal. I had to go buy these from the brown people down the street, and they usually rip me off. And sometimes I don't even know if it's actual weed or what. Uh, but anyways. Apparently, you bought 14 grams, which is a lot, by the way, for 170 bucks. But here's the weird part is you got 10% off because of some text or email, meaning you ordered it by email. Correct me if I'm wrong. And then something about you got $25 off for high supply, simply herb, root, and I don't know what that means. Uh, what's all this crap? City tax, $2. Cannabis tax, $10. Sales tax, $6, $20 of tax. You've got to be kidding me. Um, but you got $71 in discount, so this fucking $170, $71, uh, $70 really cost you uh, $118 bucks for 14 grams. That's pretty fucking cheap, bro. That's still cheaper than, 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 than if I bought 14 grams from the motherfuckers down the street, it'd be a lot more than... Than fucking 120 bucks. Damn. My state is behind on this shit, man. I'm telling you. Uh, that's fucking badass joke. Every time you fucking send me these, I get so jealous. Uh, and it's got a bunch of shit. It's got THCA, 27.1%. And I don't know. see, this is what bothers me is because, like, what does all this mean? You know? Cannaboids, 22%. Is this weed or not? Is what I, this, if I was going to these stores and they told me all of these percentages, I'm like, look, motherfucker, is this weed or not? What is this? You're trying to sell me. Motherfucker, don't be talking to me in percentages and shit. This ain't no school. The motherfucker trying to get high. But I'll tell you what, that looks beautiful. Beautiful. Oh, yeah, you motherfucker. You lucky SOB. You tell your uncle, uh, the plumber, Pete. He's a badass right there. He's an OG motherfucker tatted up and shit. You let him know that, that we're making him tonight official Woke Pack member because he looks like a real G. Woke He's a Woke Pack now, motherfucker. You know what it is. Ah, uh, yeah. Cheers, Uncle Pete, the plumber. Motherfucker, always cleaning the pipes for the ladies, huh? Ah, oh, yeah. Fucking Uncle Pete. <laughs> Let's get with the comments because there's a lot of fucking comments. And the very first comment is this fucking guy who wrote a book. This guy named Daniel McGibbon, 1589. God damn it. Usually Indie Phantom. He hasn't been here in a while. Hold the motherfuckers safe. Listen to our prayers and our, and our good energy out to Indie Phantom. has been missing in action for months already. We hope he's fine. Uh, but Daniel McGibbon on the Dracula movie says... The track record for any take on the core Universal monster films over the past 30 years has been abysmal. And to be honest, Coppola's much admired Dracula had some uneven casting that made it distracting to watch. Oh, it's one of these. Each film is so blatantly imprinted on what studio execs are pushing for the story. Oh my god. 
What the fuck? Let me let me just Van Helsing, Monster Squad style cheesy cartoon of horror. Ah, uh, blah blah blah. The Mummy, Tom Cruise fucking up and all that ass. All right, let's just fucking. I'm just summarizing it here. This motherfucker. He, I don't know what he. I didn't go to college, motherfucker. You want me to fucking keep your attention span with this shit? Look at this. I digress back to Dracula, the main concept. I don't know what he's talking about. Modern audiences. This guy's getting all philosophical and shit. Uh, the generations give a rat's ass about gar gothic horror. They they gall about Tim Burton and shit. He says. I don't know, he seems to be upset about about woke people, I think. Photocopy of photocopy and Photoshop, apparently. He says, there's hardly a film that hasn't in the past eight years. Make it work. Uh, eh, let me just skip all this. I enjoyed your post. Thank you for my comment. Let's see what the trailer shows us on this one. All right, don't you see? You should have just fucking ended it with that. Instead of writing all that shit, you should have just put, I enjoyed your post. Thank you for comment. Let's see what the trailer shows. That's pretty much it. <laughs> Look, motherfucker, I don't have a lot of a big attention span and I'm not educated. So you fucking writing all of this really smart shit uh, doesn't go well with me. All right. Uh, I do appreciate you commenting and uh, being smart because we need more smart people in the world. Yes, Gomer, Monster Squad is the shit. I love that fucking movie. Oh, yeah. All right, uh, let's see who's next. Oh, yeah, yeah. Cheers to fucking uh, Daniel McGibbon, and I'll give you the DJ horn for commenting a whole book and being smarter than the rest of us. <laughs> Cheers. Holy shit, Anthony Timmons is here. Cheers, Timmons. <laughs> Yo, yeah, motherfuckers, thank you for being here. Happy Friday. Hope you're doing good. Uh, our next comment comes from this channel's resident Asian, Robo Iger. Let me hit it for this guy. Konnichiwa. And Robo says uh, on the podcast video, a bunch of laughing emojis, and he says, No, you don't look Asian. I'm just sitting here with Holia laughing at your nonsense. She's happy you like the AI art. Our DJ is back. Cash grab time. He puts a laughing uh, little guy. He says, cheers to the man. Hashtag. Live. Oh, yeah. Cheers, Robo. You and Holia, your wife, are the shit. And thank you for the AI art of me. We showed last week. That was badass. I actually put one of those as my private uh ig account that no one knows it's my personal account i actually put one of those motherfuckers up there i think all my friends think that's actually me but oh well ah, uh thank you i'm glad i don't look asian and shit you know uh, i think we with the world would be in serious trouble if the asian people started looking like this you know they're like the last re uh, uh refuge or whatever it's called you know motherfuckers are, are disciplined in their ways because you know the circumstances they were born under uh after we bombed the shit out of their country it's not their fault but you know they still became better than the rest of us cheers robo i'm talking about the japanese not the chinese sorry the japanese the chinese are just assholes <laughs> nah, i just play robo i just play you're the shit robo you know i love you you chinese motherfucker all right all right Let's see who else is next Oh, it's none other than a fucking Satanist. Uh, Rocco, fuck my life. Let me hit it for this dick. Where are you? Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Rocco. Uh, he says on the Comic-Con uh, live shit we did. That was fun. Thank you for the ones who showed up for the Comic-Con shit that we did. Uh, that was badass. Uh, I think it was the cunt. Joku was here. Some people came in and out. That was badass. RDJ as Doom, he says, let's freaking go. Obviously a money grab, but there needed to be this to get into people's wallets. Yeah, yeah, again. Cheers to the man. Hashtag. Live. Oh, yeah. Cheers, Rocco. Thank you for that, motherfucker. And you're right. I mean, they needed to. They need. We're going to talk about more of this later and shit, but there was no way in hell... That the the this universe was gonna continue being successful unless they did something this desperate, and they did, and yeah, uh, it, it's gonna get our cash for sure. For the first time in five years, they're actually gonna get our cash. 
Actually, they're going to have to wait two more years because then we don't come out for two more years. And then they'll get our cash. Until then, we're still pirating. Anyways, let's keep going. Thank you, Rocco, for commenting. Love you. Oh, Depose. He put, what up, goat? Oh, that's badass. I've never been called a goat before. I've been called a pig. And a bitch. Uh, but never a goat. That's pretty badass. Cheers, Depost. He continues, though. He wrote some other shit. Uh, well, later on. Because I saw him other comments. Tenants, I'm reading your comment right now, motherfucker. On the House of Dragons has lesbians. He puts a, another reason for me not to watch. Don't want to see dicks. Don't want to see any of that shit. <laughs> Fucking timid. Hey, what's your problem with dicks, T-Men's? All right, everybody's got one. All right, there's nothing wrong with dicks. All right, just just calm down. You know, look down every once in a while. Touch it. It's, it's, it's fine. There's nothing scary about it. <laughs> Cheers, T-Men's. You're the shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Larry Land, I heard RDJ is playing Black Panther also. <laughs> well, we do, we need a male Black Panther. Fuck Letitia Wright and her non-vaccinated ass. Get her the fuck out of here. Cheers, Timmons. Timmons also says on the X-Men lineup revealed, Fuck the MCU, fuck Disney, I don't trust any of them. <laughs> Fucking Timmons. Yeah, yeah, you're starting to sound crazy, Timmons. Take it easy. <laughs> Depose, he says, hey, underground, if you could join the X-Men, what would be your superpower besides drinking beer? Oh, I've thought about this long, 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 long. When I was a kid, I wanted to be like the Flash or Quicksilver. Uh, but then I found out about Nightcrawler, and I said Nightcrawler is way better than fucking being Flash uh, or Quicksilver. I think Nightcrawler is way better. Uh, but then, now, I just, like, I don't want to be exactly like them. I want to have something like a, a different power. And I thought about it. And I said, I know what my power would be. I, I would be like Smoke from Mortal Kombat. I would just turn into Smoke and fade away. And then travel as a fucking, just fucking gas or smoke. And then psh, materialize again where the fuck I want. <laughs> and the smoke would be weed smoke. So I could get high while I travel. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I would fucking do if I had fucking X-Men powers, motherfuckers. I don't know about y'all. What y'all powers would be? That's what I would be. I would be smoke. Oh, uh, yeah, weed smoke is my power, motherfucker. Into a cloud of weed smoke. Oh. End up somewhere else and just be high all day. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That all of a sudden, a hundred million dollars are missing from the federal bank. And they're all like, sir, all the money is gone. And they're all like, what happened? I don't know. But it smells a lot like weed in here. Oh, cheers! That's what I would fucking do, motherfuckers. Cheers, D-Post. Thank you for that. I knew I was going to have fun uh, fucking answering that. Depots on the House of Dragon lesbians. He says, hey, maybe Kamala Harris can join. Nah, no, nah, no. Nah. She likes men. She likes dicks. All right. Let's not start spaying rumors, Depost. She's a hoe. She likes. She slept around in college. She, she had her legs wide open. You know, she likes it. All right. There's nothing wrong with women like dicks. Nothing wrong with lesbians either. We just don't support them. That's all. Anyways, thank you, Depost. Let's get going. Depost on the call, the underground reading your comments video. He says, I'm waiting for the latest Puff Daddy video to see where he takes a dig this time. Goat, goat, goat. Yeah, uh, it's been it's been quiet. You know, I don't know when this trial is. It's going to be, you know, fucking back again and shit. Uh, but we don't have any Diddy news tonight, Depost. I'm sorry, man. Believe me, I'm always on it. I'm waiting for new Diddy. I'm waiting for a new rapey to, to come forward. I'm ready for a new video to fucking uh, come out uh, of him beating somebody and shit. You know, or selling selling somebody, somebody's body. Having some guy suck his dick. I'm definitely waiting for that video, but it hasn't come out yet. Yeah, yeah. Gomer says, I want to be 21 again as my power. Like, forever? You're going to be 21 years old forever? That'd be your power? That'd be kind of... That'd be kind of weird. 
I think if I was to pick an age where I would stay forever, I'd pick like 28. I think that's when I was like, pff, that was like peak. You know what I'm saying? My body and, 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 and everything, you know, my voice. I didn't even sound like this, this rough back then. This is age right here, fellas. This is what happens with time. Um, they could depost. See who else commented here. Anthony Timmons on the Ski Bitty Toilet live action uh, in the works video. Ass. I fucking hate that shit. I, I literally seriously do. So, that looks seriously disgusting. Michael Bay is near the bottom of the barrel. And this is bullshit. Th this bullshit is proof. I don't know why he is doing this. So I, I first I thought, oh, maybe he doesn't even know what it is. He hasn't even seen a video. No, uh, why the fuck would you want to do it if you hadn't? Yes, he knows. He knows what it is. I just don't understand. He's an idiot. There are certain things on YouTube that went viral and have millions of views. And I don't understand why. This is one of them. It is the most annoying, uh, weirdest, dumbest, stupid shit in the world. It is seriously, it is. I hate it. I hate it. The, when the internet was young, it was cool because there was a lot of weird stuff on there. I remember there was. Uh, I don't even remember what it was. It was it YouTube? I don't even remember. I remember because there was some kids, um, a very very long time ago. I got put in charge of looking over these fucking kids. They must have been like six or seven years old. A bunch of them. And I didn't want to bother with them, so I just put them in front of the computer and here you go. And one of them, I forgot if it was YouTube or if it was a website. But it was something like, um, uh, Happy Friends or something like that. It was like, like some kind of cute little animation of like little teddy bears or, or rabbits and shit and they would like get on the school bus or so, something but something would always happen where they would get to hear the, uh, the school bus would crash and they would all die and some of them would get decapitated or something like that and it was different you know videos and they all had different things but in the end the damn things would always die and i was just like where did you find this? And like, why? Who, who showed you this? Like, little kids. And I'm like, who showed you this ass? You're not supposed to be watching this. But I was just like, but hang on. Put another one because it's kind of funny. I remember what it was called. They also showed me another one. And it was like, this one was fucked up. It definitely wasn't for kids. I liked it though. It was the Ratted Skull and Devil Doll. I think that's on YouTube. If you look it up, it'll still come out. That one was weird. And then another one, it was like, Mr... Oh, Mr. Bad and no strong bad strong bad and some other guy some guy who looked like a fucking like a wrestler it is some weird flash animations and, and they're fucked up but I don't know why these kids were looking at them but I got hooked on them because you know I just get high when I went home I just get high and watch those fucking videos and be laughing and shit um so yeah the internet uh is ass and Michael Bay is an ass for doing this ski bitty toilet shit, that dumbass. Let's keep going. Oh, <laughs> uh, sorry about that. Anthony Timmons on the Polly Shore did it. Uh, that he murdered Richard Simmons. I was saying. He says Polly Shore has always been an odd duck. At this point, nothing would surprise me. Shady as fuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, Polly Shore went online this week and was saying some ass about like, oh, Richard Simmons died and and he, the, those posts about him saying that he didn't like me and he didn't want me to do the movie, that wasn't even him writing it. It was someone else. So, you know, I'm going to keep forward with the movie. Yeah, fucking Richard Simmons' own brother had to go online and said, nobody fucking social media for Richard. Nobody wrote his post. What he wrote was his words. And if he didn't approve of that pathetic, jobless son of a bitch playing him in a movie, then neither does his family. Fuck you, Polly Shore. That's what his brother said, not me. Um, so yeah, fuck you, Polly Shore. You dumbass. You still trying to make that movie? You idiot. No one's going to watch it. We're going to boycott it, you dick. Desecrating the legacy of a legend. Anyways, Anthony Timmons also on the Takashi 69 RIS. 
uh, IRS uh, auction. He says, this guy's a waste of skin to do that to those cars, that fucking idiot. And by the way, it's not letting me thumbs up the video again. Just letting you know, son. Fucking YouTube. We already got copyright strikes for posting and showing shit someone else already showed. And it's all over the internet, too, fucking dicks. Uh, and now they're not even letting people put the, the, the like button. I bet you if you put the dislike button, it'll come out. Sons of bitches. You know what? At this time, I'm so desperate four years into this shit. We barely have 600 subscribers. I'm so desperate. I will take your dislikes. If everyone dislikes the videos, maybe we'll get more popular. We'll be the most disliked motherfucker on the internet. I'm fine with that, you dicks. Cheers, Anthony Timmons. I'm lighting up again for you. I gotta put it out every time I take a hit because I don't want to waste it. Y'all motherfuckers, I don't like wasting this shit. Every, every, every hit has to count. All right? We don't let it stay there burning. Dumbass. We're hard times, all right? The Biden's economy. Hard times. Br br bur burn. You know what? This motherfucker, I don't know if he's here tonight or not. Is it burn the world or is it brine or barn? Beer I don't know. This motherfucker, I never asked him. <laughs> I should have asked him when I was on their podcast fucking around. Anyways, this pumpkin patch son of a bitch. He says, also Gary Newman, oh, on the skibbity toilet, uh, Michael Bay. Also Gary Newman, the creator of Gmod on Steam, got copyright DMCA takedowns by Michael Bay's company. Oh, what did he show? Fucking Michael Bay. He says, uh, Michael Bay already thinks he owns the rights to Skibbity Toilet before he even made the movie. Uh, he continues and he says, This movie will be a major failure, 100%. It's a series on YouTube shorts that Brian rots kids, that brain rots kids. No adult is going to see the latest Michael Bay abomination. I still don't understand why the fuck this is being made. Why people are giving him money to make it. I mean, has anybody even seen it? Has he seen it? God damn it. I, if you haven't seen it, I hope you don't see it. Because you're going to hate it. Alright. Ski bitty toilet. It's fucking stupid. Short fucking one minute videos of idiocracy. That's basically where we're at right now. God damn it. Cheers, Prime. You motherfucker. <laughs> uh, you know, you know, on this channel, there's a warning in the beginning, and if you read it, you know what this is all about. Uh, but Brian, I, something I said or did or whatever the fuck, this guy thought it was real. <laughs> he was you know, on Twitter, he's like, I'm gonna talk about it on my podcast, and I'm like, motherfucker, we just trolling. <laughs> whatever we say, you better go search on the internet to see if it's true. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> this is purely for entertainment purposes. You dumbass. All right, let's keep going, Brian. We love you. Oh, my God. Uh, all right. So, we have someone new. Willow the Th Therian. I1Q. <laughs> Willow the Therian I1Q. A brand new person who commented... On the dude's podcast number 78, the review of Boba Fett episode 5, the Batgirl having fucking lesbianism, and, uh, and I don't even know what else. A video from like three and a half years ago, when we first fucking started the channel, when he who should not be named was on the channel. Before he abandoned us and quit, son of a bitch. And when I saw this, it pissed me off. Not because of her comment. I'm, I'm, I'm jumping ship. I'm thinking it's a her. I don't know. They. Not because of their comment. All right. That's not why I was pissed. I was pissed because this is a damn old fucking video with he who should not be named on it. God damn it. If we ever get discovered, the fuck I want it to be because someone runs into a dude's podcast. It better be the underground broadcast you're running into and not the dude's podcast. Anyways. 
Let me read her comment. We'll, we'll, we'll get into this right now. But let me read her comment. She goes, I find it offensive that you called her an animal. What if this person's family was watching? They already have a bunch of news reports. You don't need to talk crap about them. What she did was wrong, but you don't know their personal life at home. Um, so, this is another reason why this kind of pissed me off. Because this is a three and a half year old video. I don't know what the fuck she's talking about. Or they are talking about. Please, if you leave a comment about something specifically in a three hour long video, leave a timestamp so that I can click on it and know what you're talking about. Anyways, I have OCD and I'm obsessive about shit. And I just, oh, I got angered because I played this video and I was sitting through it. And I was watching the face of that son of a bitch. And every word coming out of his mouth was making me angrier and angrier. But I sat there and I fucking listened until the part that she was talking about came out. And then it clicked. And I understood everything she's talking about. So, I'm going to play you. Exactly what she's talking about, but before I do, I'll give you a little bit of context because I'm not playing the whole fucking segment because fuck that guy. And and, and I blurred it. I, I took his face off because we're not showing that son of a bitch on here. I took his face off, but I can't take his voice off because you need to hear what we're talking about. So unfortunately, we have to hear that son of a bitch's voice. But anyways, uh, I'll give you some context because I'm not showing you the whole conversation. It's when we used to do the pervert news, the weekly pervert news, and you know what it usually was. It was another teacher that slept with a student. That's what we're talking about. Some teacher that slept with her student. Here we go. That is fucked up, dude, and it's always a lady who says, my husband is not satisfying me. Yeah, yeah. The guy's a small dick. Bitch, like, how about you fucking tell him? To get some Viagra or some shit? There's no Instead such thing like... as dick implants. You dick, you got a small dick, you got a small dick. What are you gonna do? Well, I mean, why did you marry the guy in the first place? Maybe she was in love. And then you realize that that's just a bunch of bullshit and we're really just animals who want sex. She's an animal, for sure. She's an animal, for sure. She's an animal, for sure. There you go. That's the kind of racist, misogynist crap that held this channel back for three fucking years. All right. Now we're free from the racism and the misogynist and the bullshit that used to be on the other side of the screen. He's gone. And now we're woke. Now we're modern. And now we're all back on track on being fucking, you know, politically correct on this channel. So, Willow, I'm not going to apologize for what some racist said three years ago on my, on my channel. All right. Fuck that guy. He's no longer here. All right. <laughs> and we're glad he's gone. This channel's way better without him. That's all I gotta say. None of the bullshit. There's no more racism here. There's no more fucking, you know, misogynists here and shit. Everything we say is clean cut and shit. Melanie Mack, if she ever runs into these channels, she's gonna pray. She's gonna be, oh, the son of man. She's gonna be son of man. You know, fucking, she's gonna love this shit. Little girl, that hateful, hateful little girl. Uh, but anyways... Uh, thank you for commenting, Willow. Please, if you're running, don't watch the dude's podcast anymore. We have a playlist. If you want to go back and watch from the beginning how it all started. And it evolved. Every year. Every year it evolved. And the last year, the dude's podcast, towards the end, was fucking, to me, was the peak. And then he fucked up and left, that piece of shit. So now we're here. Episode 25. Of this new underground broadcast. Son of man. You know how it is. And everyone down here, let them know. It's always. Whoa, hack. Oh, 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 oh
which reminds me, I'm green lighting a green light on that fucking son of a bitch, he who should not be named. If any of you woke pack members run into him in the street, you jump out of your car, beat the crap out of him, and leave. You don't join a gang and think you can just fucking quit whenever you want. Fuck you. You're in it for life. That's what we say. Full, 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 live. Do it again. Motherfucker, you ain't quitting the gang. The gang's beating your ass up. If we watch you and we catch you in the streets, son of a bitch. All right, we're moving on. <laughs> don't, don't, don't. If you run into him, don't do that. I'm just fucking around, people. <laughs> uh, D post on uh, reading comments. He says, and in December, you can hang the buzz balls in your tree. I was promoting Buzzball Chillers last week, and you blew my fucking mind, Depots. Those things are perfect to hang, and they come in all different colors. They got pina coladas and, and, and green apples and strawberries, watermelons, and coffee. So they're all different colors. If you go buy, buy a bunch of them, you could hang them all in your tree, and it probably would look pimp as fuck. Just go and go and say. Uh, so cheers, Depots. You blew my mind with that comment, motherfucker. I'll just tell you that. D Pose also in the comments, he goes, Anyway, you're still the most entertaining YouTube podcast out there. Broadcast. Uh, out there. You have to do more marketing. Cheers, might. Enjoy the buzz. Um... Uh, yeah, man, they the motherfuckers. That's that's the problem with YouTube. That's why it's been four years and we only have 600 subscribers. It's because YouTube purposely, like you said, the, the like button doesn't work. Some motherfuckers say, oh, I never got a notification for your video that came out. And shit. Jose Trevino, I could never find the podcast video the other week. He's telling me and shit. So, you know, like they always try to sabotage motherfuckers like small channels because they want to force Four small channels to give them money to promote and come out and get subscribers and shit. And it's really just a bunch of bots that they hire. Oh, he paid us 20 bucks. Give him 100 bots. And all of a sudden, you get 100 subscribers. And boom, you don't fucking see no one commenting and no one viewing your videos. We have 600 fucking subscribers and only like 26 views on each fucking video. And that's on the podcast. And all my fucking videos only get like one or two views. So fuck you, YouTube. Son of a bitch. Motherfucker. It'd be 10 years from now. We're going to get 1,000 subscribers to be celebrating here. I'm going to be 70 years old. Be like, oh, yeah. So 1,000 subscribers. We made it. <laughs> Fuck you, YouTube. They fucking hate us. Anyways. Thank you, D-Post, for stating the obvious. <laughs> Let's keep going. Anthony Timmons on a Not Everything is Hateful video. The 80s movie was awesome. Great cast. Uh, he's talking about the, the Running Man. Oh, yeah. I can't wait for this re Edgar Wright remake. It's going to be badass, is all I'm going to say. Timmons. Yeah, yeah, it was. I love Arnold. I love me some Arnold. I was just watching Terminator 2 Judgment Day on TV. Oh, yeah. I love that shit. <laughs> Uh, Anthony Timmons on the Billy Ray messy divorce continues. He says she was just using him, but that's what he gets for trusting her in the first place. Why does he sound like Stone Cold after he smoked seven packs of cigarettes? He does kind of sound like that. You know, he does sound like all fucked up and shit, but he was all drunk probably. And he's old as fuck. Fucking looking like Johnny Depp or not Johnny Depp, Rob Zombie and shit. Um, of course, when you marry someone who's half your age and really, really fucking good looking way beyond your fucking league, you know she just wants something out of you. Duh. You're Billy Ray Cyrus, who's the father of Miley Cyrus? Oh, yeah. She don't want nothing from you, dumbass. I hope her pussy was good for, you know, the two months you were married to her, you fucked her. Then you're like, oh, it's too loose. I'm divorcing your ass. Yeah, yeah. That's what you get for getting married in the first place. Idiot. Anyways. Oh my god. Speaking of misogyny, here's our resident our resident fucking asshole. Uh no ma'am. Let's hit it for this guy. No ma'am. National Organization of Men Against Amazonian Masterhood. Alright. Uh no ma'am says Son of man, I just got home from the draft theater. I saw Deadpool again. It was even more dope the second time around. I'ma keep it drinking here at home watching your ass. Cheers, son. Hashtag. Wolfpack. 
or live. Ah, oh, yeah, 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 motherfucker. Chairs, no man. This motherfucker's. He saw Deadpool. I, I think he. This motherfucker has a hookup at the theater or something because he saw Deadpool before it came out. And you know, uh, before even the pirated version came out. Dude, you guys. Uh, last Saturday, I got home from work. I put on YouTube and the first on my TV. I put YouTube on my TV and the first recommendation, it was Deadpool Wolverine 1080p. It said, uh, I, whatever, a full movie. And I was like, and I clicked on it. <laughs> and it was not only that, but it was a cleaner version than all the 10 versions I had downloaded uh, uh, off the the Jack Sparrow Bay. And the audio was fucking perfect. I understood everything they were saying and I was just like, wow. And I freaking turned my computer on and I downloaded that YouTube video. By the next, by probably by the next hour and a half, they had taken it down. But some son of a bitch got the best looking Deadpool and Wolverine trailer and put it up on YouTube. It already had like 36,000 views and shit. I was kind of mad. I even put a comment on the video i said fuck you we get two copyright strikes for putting fucking pictures from twitter and y'all motherfuckers putting a whole fucking goddamn movie in excellent quality by the way thank you i put my comment there and shit uh but yeah i was mad because nothing happens to motherfuckers like that we fucking get you know picked on all the time by the the big the big machine fuck you youtube anyways let's keep it going timmins thank you no ma'am Timmons, have, have the Harvey Weinstein was hospitalized. It couldn't have happened to a nicer guy. Karma's a bitch. Harvey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't worry. He still hasn't gotten what he's going to deserve. All right, Selma Hayek's going to choke him to death with those titties when he gets there. And it's not going to be pretty. Uh, R. Kelly experiences depression. Timmons says he should have left those little kids alone. Fucking perv. Yeah, this, this, there's some people that they're just fucking, I don't even know how to describe this guy. What? <sighs> Fuck that guy. He, he, I'm glad he's in jail, man, but I, I hope bad things happen to him in jail. I just say it like that. I'm trying, I'm trying to keep it clean on this channel. All right. But anyways, try to keep positive too. I don't want to, you know, send a lot of bad vibes out there. R. Kelly, on the R. Kelly video, uh, D Post also says, R. Kelly singing every night in jail when he gets it up the axe of the, of the ass. Goat, he must be jail's favorite sweetheart. Rocket, rocket, rocket. Red rocket. I hope so. He deserves it. I'm just gonna say it like that, motherfucker. D Post also says on the fucking uh, rain. The rain, the Running Man video. The remake, the re remake movies are so bad. The remakes of Tron and Total Recall are so bad. Um, the remakes of Tron were actually sequels. They were not remakes, motherfucker. It was a sequel to the to the first Tron, and I liked it. I liked the the new Tron because I was high as fuck and I saw it with the 3D glasses, and I was just like, this is the greatest. This is what 3D was invented for for movies like Tron. I was just like, those motorcycles and the, the, the lights. Oh, it was so fucking badass, you know. Uh, but the Total Recall, yes, I agree. They fucked it up completely. They had hot chicks. They had Charlize Theron and uh, what's her name from fucking Under, Underworld. They had that chick there too. And somehow they still managed to fuck up the movie. You know, and they even had, uh, what's his name? Fucking Australian motherfucker. Bad boy motherfucker likes to fight. Forgot what his name. Colin Farrell. Colin Farrell. Oh, uh, yeah, that movie was just so, it was not at all like Arnold's, and they just it de deviated away from it too damn much. Uh, it was not good. It's not good. So, but I, I don't know, I think, I, I have faith in Edgar Wright. I'm going to be honest with you. I think Edgar Wright will hopefully knock it all apart. I think mean, he knew that Marvel was ass, so he left. He's like, oh, you don't want to let me do my Ant-Man? You want ass on screen? I'll get someone else to do ass. I only do good shit. And he left Marvel. So I, I have respect for him for that. All right. I, and I have hope. He continues. He says, Arnold made that movie great. Nobody can replace Arnold's persona. He was bigger in life. And nobody without charisma, but with just a cool jawline, will replace him. Come on. No, this guy, this guy, pretty boy's good. I like this guy. That's all I'm saying, like, you know. 
He's good in that Twisters movie. He's good in the fucking Top Gun. You know, don't worry. He's fucking rock hard abs, and nice chest. No, no hair on his chest neither. This is all clean, waxed. It's badass. He's got a good tan too. Depost. Just say. Cheers. If you're commenting. Jess Rivers on the R. Kelly Experiences Depression says This man is the lowest piece of filth on earth. He deserves everything he gets Are you talking about R. Kelly or are you talking about me Jess? You motherfucker. You know what? Come to think about it. The last comment you you fucking left was like this and shit You better start being specific all right, I was going to say Pacific. Uh, you better start being specific. I'm high now, motherfuckers. Oh, yeah. You better start being specific, Jess. Are you trash-talking me? Or are you trash-talking R. Kelly? Just want to know. <laughs> Cheers. Thank you for commenting, Jess. All right, all right. Continue. Oh, my God. I, I think it's been a while on this motherfucker. None other than fucking... Dog on funny. We hit it for this ass. Woke as fuck. Uh, Doug says, Wow, what a week. Our DJ coming back. Wow. I hadn't seen your video because. Let me. Oh, it's gonna fuck up the minute I touch this. Oh, no, I didn't. Thank God. He says, I didn't watch your video because I didn't want. Spoilers for Deadpool and Wolverine. My son and I finally saw it yesterday. It was so awesome. I'm finally somewhat excited for the future of the MCU. We'll see what happens. Cheers, son of man. Hashtag. Live. Cheers, Doug Unfunny. I think a lot of people have gotten that that. That that feeling, that rush, that 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 old familiar rush, that feeling we used to get at Comic Cons when Marvel, you know, would come out and and announce shit. Because you know, the past five years, the fuck, man. You know, it's at the very least, we're gonna get two good movies, All right? The very least, the two Avengers movies. That's it. We can look forward to that, because the Russos are in charge now. Alright, thank you, Doug, uh, for coming back. I'm sure you're watching shit, like you said, you hadn't watched it because you don't want spoilers, you motherfucker. That's what this channel is, just spoilers. Cheers. You know I love you. Anthony Timmons on the uh, All I Need is Scarlet Yost. Scar Joe can save anything. Yeah, yeah. With her big ass and big titties. Oh, yeah. She just had some kids, too, so you know she's filled. Oh, yeah. Cheers, Scarlet Yost. <laughs> we love you. On this channel. We worship you on this channel, Scarlet. <laughs> Gomer Kyle on the RV Weinstein is hospitalized. Uh... He put uh, in a Jerry Seinfeld snarky voice. <laughs> ah, that's a shame. Yeah, fucking Gomer chairs, Gomer. I like, I like that. He also said on the on the House of Dragon, le has lesbians. But where are all the dongs at? LOL. Cheers. Hashtag. Hashtag. <laughs> Fucking Gomer, I like that shit. Um, don't worry, Gomer. The dicks are coming. They're coming soon. All right. We saw we saw a, a part of a dick. There was a girl sucking a dick like two episodes ago. It was too fast. It was too fast. I told you guys it was too quick. I saw it though. I saw it. Uh, not enough dicks. Not enough dicks. You're absolutely right. Don't worry. I have faith that the last episode of House of Dragons will have plenty of dicks. Keep our fingers crossed. Uh, let's keep going. 
Gomer on the Billy Ray Cyrus. He says, my mom hated Billy Ray. He was in a feud with Marty Stewart. Uh, who's Marty Stewart, motherfucker? And he was messing with one of mom's favorites, men singers. She called him a no talent who wears tight jeans and he didn't even have an ass. She would say, oh, cheers, hashtag. <laughs> Your mom's a badass. Hashtag. Uh, P.S. He's trying to dress like my boy Rob Zombie, but without his talent. He's got the voice, though. Chairs, Gomer, and your mom. Your mom's badass. Super Saiyan Joku on the Billy Ray Cyrus video says, a big shock here. Not everyone in the world know, knew he was being used, but him. Oh, he says, uh, his whole family's a freaking hot mess. Cheers, mother flowers. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, that's what happens when you have a lot of money and you're a hick. Yep, 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 yep. All right, let's keep going. We got more comments. Uh, Joku also says in R. Kelly, that audio is 100% from a concert. That's not the song to be singing in jail. I would sing I Believe I Can Fly, bro, signaling the booty warrior from the boondocks. Hey, son of man, the say R. Kelly sucks dick. Throw his butthole. Cheers. What? I don't, you know, I've seen, okay, I know what the boondocks are, and I've seen some episodes. I've seen some, but I'm not like that. I've never really got. I think. I think when they were out, I probably didn't have access, like I do out nowadays, to see it all. Um, I saw a few episodes. You know, I did. I did. It's fucking super smart. Uh, super fucking genius. That that kid, because he was a kid who came up with it. Uh, he's a fucking really smart motherfucker. I'll just tell you that. Um. But I don't know what you're talking about. But yeah, it's boondocks, and you know you're probably talking about ass and me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It probably makes sense. It probably makes sense. I, I believe you. He says, hashtag. Live. Yeah, yeah. Let's see. He also is this the last one? Are you the last one? Let's see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Did the last comment. All right, which still we went an hour. I knew there was a lot of comments. He says, uh, we'll start the show pretty soon, guys. Don't worry. I'm not going to take a break. But anyways, Gomer says, on the uh, 69's uh, IRS fucking shit, he says, who wants those cars? Anybody that pays $90,000 on this paintball piece of shit hot mess is a fool. Cheers, Muff Flowers. I don't know who the fuck paid... Uh, money to win that auction. I would have been like, them bad. Somebody already threw paint on them. I don't want to. It should be a bigger discount. I'm fucking sell them for 20 grand. The motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? Uh, chairs, Joku. Uh, thank you all for commenting. I really do appreciate you commenting on some nights when I don't have a lot to talk about. You literally make the show because the show would fucking be finished in like an hour and shit. So I really do appreciate your comments. I read everyone's comments, even if you're talking shit. Just to let you know, I don't really give a fuck. Uh, just remember, if you're going to put bad words to misspell or do pronunciations or do something different, because YouTube is fucking dicks to everyone, and our channel especially gets fucking uh, censored all the time. Just ask the motherfuckers in the bottom. They get censored all the time. Their comments they don't even come out. I don't delete comments. Why the fuck would I want to delete comments? I want more people coming in. All right? Anyways. Uh, so, anyways, thank you all for commenting. I appreciate you. Uh, but before I do leave you, uh, goodbye for the comments. We have our very own resident Gomer Kyle with this weekly redneck advice. Here we go. Hey, this is Gomer, and welcome back to Redneck Advice of the Week. You know, I will look on the internet, and I see a bunch of these women saying, Why, well, we don't need men. Oh, this and that. We can burn our bras and whatnot. Well, you know what? The hell you do need men. 
because without man, you wouldn't be able to kill a spider or a bug or reach on the top shelf to get something or pick a restaurant out to eat. Hell, if it wasn't for a man, women, they'd be driving around for hours just trying to go back to McDonald's. Anyway, my advice for you is the next time a woman says, we don't need a man, you tell them, the hell you don't because we still have spiders and you still can't pick out where you want to eat every time we go out. Cheers. Hashtag woke fight for life. Hashtag woke son for life. All right, I guess uh, fucking Gomer is the new misogynist of the fucking channel. Wait, we don't need he who should not be named. We got a very old misogynist here, Gomer Cow. <laughs> Gomer, I am utterly offended by this, you son of a bitch. Like, uh, uh, I just want to know. <laughs> I want to know one thing, Gomer. It's why when you got to the part where you were going to say, Hey, bitch. Uh... You don't need men. You know, all this shit. Why, all of a sudden, your voice got super quiet. <laughs> you didn't want your wife to fucking hear you say the bad part. <laughs> Gomer, I fucking love you, motherfucker. <laughs> You're the shit. Uh, hey, I'm scared of spiders, motherfucker. I need a big man around. Kill, kill the spiders or a bug for me. And then, yeah, I ain't gonna lie. Sometimes when I'm really high, I'm, I'm driving around not knowing what to get to eat. <laughs> I know I'm hungry. I just don't know what I want. So, I guess I am a woman inside. Hey, maybe I should take up boxing. I heard they're letting us in, fellas. I am yes. <laughs> Thank you all for commenting. I appreciate y'all. We're done with the fucking comments. Um, but like I said... We got a long show. We're an hour in already. I ain't taking a break. Let's get this show on the road and start with the weekly pop culture breakdown. Alright, this week, fellas, it finally happened! Universal Studios is greenlit a Britney Spears biopic. Holy shit. How, how authentic, how true to the source material are they going to get? That is my question. If I don't see her shaving her fucking head because she doesn't want to get drug tested and lose her kids, then it's not a real fucking movie. Alright. If we don't see her dancing around playing with knives, then it's not a real Britney Spears biopic. If we don't see her uh, taking pills to get a baby aborted while, uh, you know, she's fucking, you know, shitting her fetus out, the fetus out in the, to in the fucking bathtub and Justin Timberlake is on the other side uh, of the door playing guitar for her, serenading her so she feels better. If that doesn't come out in the movie, then this is not an authentic Britney Spears movie. Alright. I am a huge Britney fan. Everyone here knows it. I've even played experts from her fucking book, which I downloaded and I listened to it religiously. I know this lady by... I love this lady. I know her life already. By reading that book. Michelle Williams is awesome reading as Britney Spears. It's perfect. They couldn't have chosen a better person to read for her. I'm excited for this. I am very excited for this. And I can't wait. I can't wait for this at all. Uh, I, 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 mean, I don't even know what else to say, fellas. I have nothing bad to say about this. I want to see this already. All right. I don't know who they're going to cast. Uh... The real question that I thought about it was like, who fucking uh, bought the rights for the movie? I mean, there was people, I guess, you know, you're obviously Universal, but a Universal might just be distributing. Somebody, somebody else might be producing this. Um, we'll get some more information as more and more stuff comes out in the weeks. This is a top story. I needed to tell you right away. Uh, something else that happened this week, something magical and amazing and pretty much defies literal, the literal laws of nature. But an actual literal dead husk. Yeah, a dead husk was animated and celebrated 
It's 82nd, 81st birthday, Mick Jagger. And he celebrated <laughs> with his young 37-year-old girlfriend, Melanie Hamrick. Look at this lady. She loves wrinkly, old, rubbery dicks. <laughs> oh my god. How's this man still alive? You know, I'm possibly dying right now at this very second. And I probably have lived a semi-healthy life. Healthier than his, for sure. I'll just say it like that. This motherfucker's 82 years old. They're motherfuckers that work out every day and they run. They fucking, for some strange reason, they get ass cancer and die. What the fuck, right? This son of a bitch has probably done every drug imaginable. Uh, drinks, smokes, does nothing but fuck off all day and fuck younger women. It shit and has kids with them still. You know, he has like a kid that's like fucking like two or three years old. It's insane. And then he's 82. God damn it. How's he still alive is what I'm wondering, you know. Skinny. You know, this guy, he, he probably eats like a bagel a day. And that's that's been his diet for the past 40 years, actually. You know, this motherfucker's always been like that since since he was back then in the Rolling Stones. You know, the only difference between this Mick Jagger and the Mick Jagger from back in the day is that this one has more wrinkles because it's the same rig skinny little fucking fragile body you're looking at right there. And the same nasty fucking crooked teeth. That motherfucker with all his money and fame, he never got his teeth fixed. Oh, man. Some people, they have it all, folks. They have it all. No, nah, no, nah, no. Nah. I've said it before and I'll say it again. This son of a bitch sold his soul to the devil. There's no way in hell someone as talentless uh, and as hideous looking as this could become that rich and powerful and famous. The motherfucker can't sing. It's the worst voice on all the earth. Next to Ozzy Osbourne. The worst voice. And somehow everybody loves the songs. Fuck you. Are you all death? Clean your fucking ears. He doesn't know how to sing at all. God damn it. Anyways, happy birthday, Mick Jagger, you dumbass. I would say I hope you die, but uh, you're obviously not going to die. Son of a bitch. Uh, well, we shouldn't feel too bad, you know, about our shitty lives and our jobs and our miserable existence. Because even the celebrities have it tough. Somebody who's been having it tough lately has been Drake. You know, he had just signed a $400 million lifetime deal with Universal Music Group. Oh, yeah. Exclusive deal. $400 million. All your music and your catalog and your hours. Your ass is ours. We own you now, Drake. And Drake said, for $400 million, you can own it, baby. And he took it. And that same week, the dumbass decided to get in a beef with Kendrick Lamar, out of all people. And Kendrick Lamar destroyed his career. He's a joke now, this fucking fake. I've been saying it for years. He's been a fake. You, uh, even, I always said this guy had ghost writers and fake. Lil Wayne writes all his raps, I used to say. Fuck it, he sounds too much like Lil Wayne. Fuck that guy, I used to say. And I knew it all along. And then they found out he was a ghost writer. And even when people found out that he had ghost writers, like two, two to three years ago, people still loved him and shit. And he still got this fucking ludicrous deal. Who fucking gets a deal for $400 million? Only Jewish motherfuckers, that's who. Anyways... Uh, it pissed me off, right? And shit. But now his career is ruined. And the people at Universal are probably shitting themselves saying, Fuck, we just gave this guy $400 million and he's gonna produce no more hits because everyone thinks he's a loser now. Uh, and if you think I'm exaggerating, if you honestly think I'm exaggerating, there was a Limp Biscuit concert in Drake's hometown of Toronto, Ontario, over there in the Canada. Where he's from and shit. Because he's not from the hood. And he's not black either. He's white and Jewish. Anyways. In his hometown out of all places. And uh, he decided to go to watch Limp Biscuit. And because you're Drake and you have $400 million. You don't have to sit with the audience. You can be backstage. Well this is how much people love Drake nowadays. 
Let me show you this video, fellas. Did you know Drake's here tonight? I thought Drake was your homie. Since Drake's here, he's over here on the side. I'm going to do this one for him. First thing to do you. He was going to introduce Drake and bring him out to the crowd. And the crowd were like, fuck Drake, boo. And he's all like, oh, yeah, you guys don't like Drake? I thought he was your homie. And the boos get louder. Drake is there saying like, telling him like, no, no. I'm not going out there. So he decided not to go out there. Look, number one, a Limp Biscuit concert is the worst place to say Drake is here. That's two completely different fucking audiences. 100%. One, now, if you would have said Lil Wayne, that's different because Lil Wayne's kind of alternative. You know? Yeah, I think as some, some of those people would have been excited. But even another rapper, pretty people might would have been like, whatever. But, you know, Drake is not somebody, something that people at a Limp Biscuit concert are going to be excited about. It's not. So that was stupid already. This dumbass showing up and, and, and trying to come out and shit. Look, motherfucker, that's it. You're done. Your own city, where you're from, just booed you and prevented you from coming out and further embarrassing yourself in front of him. He's done, man. You might as well just give those $400 million back because those rich Jewish motherfuckers who gave you that money are going to be pissed when you don't deliver your number one hit singles anymore. And you're not. You're done. No one likes you anymore. We know. He's not like us. He's not like us. Oh, yeah. Cheers, Kendrick Lamar. Drake, you fucking pedophile. <laughs> all right we're moving on from this shit um i do have to talk about no this is part of the comic book stuff but this is still is kind of pop culture-ish all right there's comic book nerd stuff we're gonna talk about later but this kind of falls within the range of the fucking uh uh pop culture all right because something crazy happened at comic con this year apparently there were multiple arrests this year 14 of them 14 people were arrested in a sting operation and they were actually human trafficking they weren't kidnapping fucking geeks and nerds and you know and gonna go sell them in another country as sex slaves and shit a total of 10 fucking nerds were recovered and you think i'm making this up go look it up i know we say a lot of shit on this channel but i go look this shit up 14 people were arrested and 10 nerds were rescued fucking a bunch of fucking uh spider gwens and and fucking rogues <laughs> and chan lee's they were rescued they were already mad they were all drugged <laughs> in uh, the back of a van somewhere they were gonna take them back to taiwan or north korea and shit and sell them over there oh my god what kind of a fucking world are we living in where comic con's not even safe for people anymore and what's even worse is that the fucking government is telling you that movies like in Hollywood, that movies like that movie, what was it called? Uh, I forgot, Operation, I don't know. But they're making a big deal about it, about human trafficking. They're saying it's a bunch of lies. Here it is in your face. What's lies about this? Motherfuckers, they're taking women, our women. They're taking them away, drugging them. So somebody else can pay to fuck them. Fuck those people, man. I was trying to, what, I, I want to take Chan Lee out. I want to go up to see, shoot my shot. You never know, motherfuckers. But how am I ever going to shoot my shot where some motherfucker already drugged her, put her in the back of a van and took her to another country to sell her? That's some bullshit. Those are our women, American women. And this is happening to all of them. That's all I'm saying. Um, I did some investigation because I was trying to find a picture of these perverts that were there at the Comic Con. Like, who was it? And the motherfuckers dressed as Wolverine. And maybe there was a Spider Man that lured some of these girls over to the van and drugged them. I wanted to get to the bottom of this shit. 
Um, The Sound of Freedom. You're right. That's the movie. Thank you very much, Anthony Timmons. Download it. It's real. It's happening. And this is the proof right here. I want you to get to the bottom of this. And I couldn't find... I couldn't find the pictures of the perpetrators or even the, the victims that were rescued. I couldn't find pictures of them either. Believe me, if I would have, they would have been on here. Uh, but I, I call my contacts over there in San Francisco or wherever the fuck this happened. San Diego, there you go, right there. I called the motherfuckers and I told them, get over there, you motherfuckers. Woke pack for life, I told them. Woke And uh, we found out how this all went down. All right, this is a tip. It was somebody tipped off the cops and said, Hey, sir, there's a really very suspicious looking man over there. And he keeps circling kids and, and, and young women and shit and, and boys, little boys. We don't know what's going on, but I think we should go keep an eye on that man. And they said, well, what does he look like? And he said, well, here, I took a picture of myself because, you know, I took a, I, I took a, a, I was taking a picture of this family and shit. And he photobombed. He just jumped in and he photobombed. And he goes, uh, but this is the guy. And that's how the cops fucking got tipped off. They, they, they followed the man and right away they recognized him, you know, from, from before in their past uh, uh, surveillance and shit. And then and everything, everything got exposed after that. Uh, but here is the picture, everybody. Of the ringleader and uh, the, the, the guy who took this picture, he saved a lot of lives. He saved 10, 10 nerds' lives. Uh, here it is the perpetrator. It was another Kevin Spacey motherfucker trying to disguise himself as, as the zebra gum guy. Suddenly, you want some zebra gum to little boys? He was trying to take little boys, fellas. That son of a bitch, 14 year old boys. You see that kid over there? The, the, the Blues Brothers and shit? They knew. They're all like, fuck, get away from him. They were running and shit. Uh, this whole family was abducted. They were going to sell them over there in North Korea. Especially that Asian girl. Uh, fucking Spacey. The son of a bitch. <laughs> Gomer, it was he who should not be named. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, take it easy on that asshole. I already fucking went nuclear on him during the comments. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, we're done fucking around with this shit. Uh, but let me keep it going because someone who wasn't at Comic Con, fellas, was none other than Kang the Woman Beater. We all know why he wasn't. Because, you know, he got replaced. I told you he was. Fuck the guy. He got what he deserves, all right? You want to go and beat on a woman just because you're rich and famous? Not in my world or reality. Son of a bitch. Anyways. Um, he was in a Comic Con. But he managed to pay uh, an unknown source that we can't say. Because if we say where we got this video, they're going to copyright strikes us. But we don't give a fuck. We still post it. <laughs> um, we can't say who it was, but you know you know who it was. But the motherfucker paid them and said, oh, I'm going to come out of the gym with my muscles and, and, and ask me questions and make me look good. Well, here it is, fellas. Nice. <laughs> I mean, nice. It, it was announced nice. that Robert Downey Jr. was, you know, being brought back from Marvel to play Doctor Doom. I mean, it looks like he's replacing your villain, you know, King. I mean, are you hurt with the new direction that, like, Marvel is, like, going? Yeah, heartbroken. You are? Yeah, of course. How could, come on. Come on. Yeah, of course. I love him. I love Kang. I love Kang. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know. Doctor Doom is wicked, though. Oh, yeah. yeah, it is good. It's gonna be good. I mean, I mean, both Robert Downey Jr. and Ezra Miller have had like a history of trouble with like, you know, the law and getting arrested for felonies. I mean, you only had a misdemeanor. Do you feel like it's unfair that like you're not being given the same opportunities as them? Uh, damn. Uh, I think it's, I think it's fair that Mr. Downey is being and has been greeted with uh, patience and curiosity and love, uh, and that Mr. Miller has gotten the same treatment, um, and that they're being allowed to work their art and uh, be creative uh, at that level. You know, uh, it's not, not. I'm not really. 
I didn't really, I didn't really get that. So, you know. Do you wish you had like the same opportunity as them? I mean, that's hard. I mean, come on. Yeah. I mean, why do you think that's the case, though? Like for them. Wow. Um. I don't know. <laughs> Would you want your old role back, like your old job back as Kang the Conqueror? Kang? Yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. I love him. That's why I said I love him. I love him. I love Kang. Love time. Love he who remains. Love him. If that's what the fans want, if that's what Marvel wants, just roll. Nobody wants you back. You son of a bitch, you're done. All right? You beat a woman, you're out. I don't even know why Ezra Miller got a chance. I was fucking pissed. I would have just... The whole Flash movie is canceled. That's what I would have done. Um, You're right, Gomer. <laughs> that little bitch, man. Even I was like... The way it was, when he goes, wow. He's like, oh shit, you're asking me this shit. She basically wanted him to say, it's because I'm black. That's exactly what she wanted him to say. Uh, the fact that he didn't say it... Uh, to me was very surprising because after he the, sh the way he talks in private remember he showed those those audio tapes we showed you during the trial the way he talks in private to that little girl and shit and and, and it's so fucking oh i'm better than everybody and shit i honestly am surprised that he didn't fucking say yeah because of this and shit i was expecting it uh but he's obviously smarter than, than, than normal people and he stopped himself by going, wow, uh, I don't know why. But you know goddamn well he, he wanted to say it. I, I do believe he wanted to say it. Because this motherfucker thinks he's better than everybody. You heard what he was saying. I, d somebody who speaks like that and who thinks like that of themselves. That's this fucking piece of shit person, bro. Like... You're not better than anyone on this planet. You want to know why? Because you still get hairs on your ass like everyone else. You still got to wipe your own ass like everyone else. You take a shit like the rest of us, you motherfucker. You ain't better than everybody. You fucking, you piss, you shit, you fart. Just like the rest of us, you motherfucker. And you're going to die one day like the rest of us. So you ain't better than no one on this fucking planet. Just leave it like that. I'll tell you, there's a lot of people that are better than you because none of us, hopefully, in the chat as well, have ever beaten a woman, for fuck's sakes. So yeah, you know, I'm think I'm considering joining boxing because apparently it's okay to beat women in boxing now, and I think that'd be fun. You know, if it was in a sport, I'm not saying I want to beat women. I'm saying if it was in a sport, I mean, I, they'd be, come on, fellas. Okay, get with the times, all right? Get with the times. All right, fuck you, Kang the Conqueror. You're out. You're out of here. Uh, chairs. All right. Let's get into... We're done. We're done with the fucking uh, pop culture breakdown. Forgive me, I'm fucking stoned. Uh, but let's get into the weekly comic book nerd shit. And I'm going to hit you guys with a badass one from the beginning. All right, before we get to the bullshit, hit you with a good shit. After the failure, after the failure that Paramount had with 313's Halo property, they're saying that Christopher Nolan is now reaching out to them and saying, Hey! Can I buy the rights to the TV series since Paramount fucked it up and they're not going to do shit? Uh, can I give it a go? Oh my god. Christopher Nolan doing Halo. And this guy's not an idiot because he just saw the crap they just did. They say he plays a video game and he says he's a big fan. That's what they say. I don't know. I don't know the guy. I've never been over to his house. All right. 
But if we finally get someone with the fucking likes as fucking, uh, you know, and, and right now he's ex exclusive, I think, too. Is it Warner? I think he is exclusive to Warner. Uh, so this will end up in Warner and they're going to make some fucking serious cash on their HBO Max and shit. If they have a Halo series on it. That'll be fucking badass. And uh, something done the right way with Master Chief never taking off his fucking helmet. And none of this fucking made-up characters and bullshit. Just fucking get to the Halo ring and get to some action and shit. Give me the Arbiter and all that ass. I want it all. And I think that this guy, Christopher Nolan, he is the motherfucker to do it. He is. He's a nerd, like you said. Uh, he's, he's, a, he's a fucking a gamer. Uh, Gomer just said, yes, yes, he is. Halo, he would do so good, man. Like, I'm fucking, you know, I, I am, like, leaking out of my dick right now just even thinking about it. I'm not fucking lying. Fuck. I was so disappointed. And I'm even more disappointed that they actually canceled it. Not because I liked it, but because I just wanted to see them finish the goddamn story and get to a point where it look, feels like an ending just because I was like, I already invested too much of my piss, piece of shit time watching this ass. So, like, goddammit, let me have some kind of ending so I can be satisfied and say, well, at least it fucking ended. I hate when they cancel shit and you don't even see an ending to a shitty series you were being forced to watch. Why? Because we're doing this piece of shit show. That's why. <laughs> But I think Christopher Nolan will fix it all, you fellas. I really do. I think he's the man to do it. He really is. Um, Let's hope. Let's hope they sell him the rights. I mean, it'd be stupid for 313 to say no to Christopher Nolan. Would you say no to Christopher Nolan? Christopher Nolan's all like, oh, I'll buy the rights to your to your life, son of man, and make a movie. Be like, fuck, you don't even need to buy a motherfucker. I'll give you the rights for free. I just want to want you to do something with my life. Make it better. I would tell him. I would tell him right away. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So cheers, Christopher Nolan. I hope you make all of our dreams finally come true. Cheers. Let me get my quick review out of the way. Now do it quick because I know most of you motherfuckers, unless it's the cunt, most of you motherfuckers give a fuck about this. But I, I watched this and I actually like this. Game of Thrones. Was fucking sick as fuck. This is not an order. But I put it in order where at least I know what it is that I'm talking about. Alright, I'll, I'll focus on King Aegon. You know, he's still alive and, and the maester is fucking forcing him to walk. And he's all burnt and he, his legs all twisted and shit. And basically, Laris is telling the maester to get him to fucking move. Because he says he he's in danger, like... They're gonna kill him. Like his brother doesn't wants to be king, and and he's still alive. Th then that th he's not gonna survive here. And I need to be able to sneak him out of here one day. And that's what's gonna happen later on. Uh, then they pretty much show, or actually the episode starts like this. Like I said, this is not an order. I'm just trying to put the story together. Uh, Rhaenyra fucking is with uh Adam, I think, or Alan. It, this I think this is Alan. I forget what these motherfuckers. They look alike. Uh, and she's telling him, why you have one of our dragons, you son of a bitch? And, um, and he says, I didn't want him. He, the fucking dragon came to me. I thought he was going to eat me. And, of course, he bends the knee and he says, I don't want to fight. Like, I, I want to serve you. And she says, well, what do you want? And because, of course, I told you what he was going to say last week. You know, he wants, he wants fucking riches. He, of course, he didn't really say. He just says he wants to serve. But, you know, because he's going to serve, he's going to have a high position as a dragon rider. You know, and shit. Um, and he's got Valerian blood, so, you know, he's he's from the original Dragon Riders, because not even the Targaryens were the original Dragon Riders, it was the Valerians. Uh, if you're a nerd like me, you'd know that. Uh, but Jaceres gets mad, and she tells him, like, hey, I know you fucked the guard, and, and I'm, I'm only half Targaryen, and, and you want to go bring all these other assholes who are not Targaryen bloods so that they can fly dragons? I was like, what's going to what's gonna happen if they want to be king? And she goes, no, you're next in line. He goes, yeah, but I'm not even true blood. They're not true blood. So now you're just saying, oh, then it's up for grabs for anybody. And he's got a point. Like, you are making it seem like that, you dumb bitch. Uh, so he has a right to get mad. Uh, off the white, they finally get to him. And it's fucking cool because, you know, the, the people at the bar are telling him, 
Uh, because no, the Tig uh, Rhaenyra is sending word. She's looking for bastard Targaryens who can learn how to ride dragons, and they'll give you a house, a name, and make you a lord and shit. Uh, official, no longer a bastard. And they tell him, "Come on, Ulf." And Ulf is all like, "Well, maybe I don't want to go." And they're like, "What? All this time you show off that you're a Targaryen bastard. Now you get your chance, and you don't want to go." And and the fucking guy goes, "Well, I don't know if it's true." <laughs> <laughs> fucking dumbass but they all cheer him and they're like oh the dragon rider and, and he ends up going and um then something weird that i don't even know if this is in the book but fucking hall i think his name's hall hammer uh this guy tells his wife because he's the other guy who's gonna tame a dragon he tells his wife that his mom was viserys and damon's sister and i was like what so he's basically cousins to fucking to Damon and to Rhaenyra. Like he's really, really close related to them. That's so weird. Um Yeah, that's so fucking weird. Um oh this is why I say this is the best episode. The Dragon Pit. They call uh Vermithor, uh, which is the second largest dragon. Oh, the cut is here. I got to hit it for him because he's the only one that likes the shit I'm talking about right now. Cut all the way from Australia. You can feel it while smoking. You can feel it while drinking. You can feel it getting woke as fuck. So get your slop ready because the cut is here. Cheers, Mike. Thank you for being here from all the way from Australia. Um, the dragon pit. This is my second favorite episode from this season. The last one was when they had the dragon battle at Rook's, Ro 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 Rook's Rest. But this is my second favorite. Rhaenyra takes all these bastards in front of Vermithor. And she tells Vermithor to calm down. And then she says, she leaves. He walks away and says, my job is done. It's up to the dragon to choose you now. Oh, what a fucking bitch. Of course, exactly what you think is going to happen, happens. The dragon doesn't like any of them and starts fucking burning the shit and eating them. Oh my god, it's fucking crazy. And from here, it's like Jurassic Park. It's all these people running and Rhaenyra's just there watching all horrified like, what have I done? From here, it's Jurassic Park. It's all these people in a cave trying to run from this ginormous fucking dragon. It's so badass. And the dragon's, like, cooking them. And then as they're on fire, he waits a little bit. And he's like, oh, okay, now he's well done. And then he eats them. The dragon's just playing with his food, bro. It's fuck, And he's humongous. Um, the dragon's gonna eat this lady and fucking whole hammer just I guess he wants to die or I don't know He just he gets brave and he screams at the dragon. I'm right here And the dragon's gonna burn him and he goes do it and then he does not and he just fucking you know Bends the knee to him like you're strong enough to yeah, I respect you. You can ride me uh, And Rhaenyra's all like cha-ching. I got one well you find out that Fucking uh, Ulf the Grey had actually run away deeper into the cave. And he runs into Silverwing, who's been asleep. And I think that, I don't, they don't give an explanation, but it seems like maybe the dragon's lonely or something. Because right away he just, you know, bends down and shit. And doesn't kill him. So, you know, now Ulf has a dragon. From here, some of the crazy stuff happens, man. Um... You see Ulf flying through King's Landing and shit. And then Amond fucking gets on uh, Vagar to chase after him. <laughs> this is so crazy because I was like, what is he doing? I was like, what the fuck? I don't even think this is in the book. They're adding this just for the shits of it. And so Amon's about to chase him. And when he's getting closer to Dragonstone across the sea, he notices that there's more of them. And he tells Vagar, fucking retreat. And he forces Vagar to turn around and shit. Because he just realized fucking Rhaenyra has, has the advantage now. Like, I have the largest dragon, but she just has the second largest. And she's got, like, three other ones and shit. And they all have riders now, is basically what he says. Uh, and it ends badass with her and all the dragons roaring with the riders on top of the dragons behind her. It's fucking badass and shit. 
Uh, my second favorite fucking uh, episode this season. Uh, Rook's Rest was my favorite one because you saw the dragon battle. This was badass. The whole taming of Vermithoth and the, the, the dragon riders. They showed a lot of... This was badass. I love this fucking episode. There's one more left next week. There's a whole other story in there with Damon. I don't know what they're doing with Damon, but I'm not even interested in it. And it sucks because he was my favorite character from the first season. I can give a fuck about him. I can't wait until he finally fights Amon because that'll be the only cool thing he's gonna do because he hasn't done shit he's been having visions over there some witch has given him visions i don't know it's just stupid i i that's the one part i hate about this season damon's fucking arc i don't know how they're gonna end it i, I still think they're gonna end it with the the two younger kids rhaenyra's kids that are all at sea getting you know taking a safety they're gonna get captured one of them flies away with the dragon which Forces Viserys to go after the little one, and then Viserys dies at the J J Sarah's J Sarah's. Sorry, I hate that they all fucking sound the same. Uh, and I feel like he's gonna fucking that that can end it like that. But it's just like there's so much stuff that happens in between. I don't think it's gonna end like that. I don't know how they're gonna end it because it's one more episode. This could have gone on for two more episodes, three even, and then they could have had a good ending to season two. But uh, they're gonna stop at one more episode. I don't think the the next episode's gonna be as good as this one or as good as episode five. I don't. I love this episode. Oh, the drag, the CGI is beautiful, beautiful bully. Uh, realized he was about to get bullied again. Yeah, yeah. He ah, oh, the CGI is beautiful on those dragons. Fucking Vagar looks so fucking badass when he opens his mouth. You can see that that dragon is old as fuck. And he's so huge, too. It's ridiculous. It's just... I don't know. I'm excited for this show. Uh, for the finale. We'll see how it ends. And don't worry, fellas. I am very, very confident there's some dicks coming next episode. There has to be. There's been, like, one dick that was getting sucked on. And we didn't even see the cock. Alright? So, this whole season. So, hopefully we'll see some more dicks before it ends. Alright? That's all I'm saying. Alright, let's move on. To the ass of the show. And you know damn well when I say ass, I'm talking about none other than Mr. James fucking Gun. Fucking piece of shit asshole. Give us those copyright strikes. Because he wasn't at fucking Comic Con because he doesn't have shit ready. He's done like a whole, he's done filming Superman. He's got all this fucking footage and and all this ass and Peacemaker and he's also filming all this ass. But he didn't have nothing ready. He's a lazy piece of shit. He's a slacker. All right, he's a slacker. He didn't have nothing ready. And so DC didn't have a presentation this year. Sad sons of bitches. He did show off, oh, I'm not at Comic-Con, but here's a new Superman shirt you can order on the website. The picture is blurry. You're not holding the phone right, you fucking nerd. You dumbass. You look like an idiot. And he wants to get clout by going there and praising a movie we're going to talk about a little bit later. Praising someone else's success. Wow, he says on, on whatever the fuck this is, this Instagram or some ass threads. He says, wow, over 206 million uh, uh, doll, doll, fucking uh, whatever uh, box office for Deadpool and Wolverine this weekend. I'm so happy for Hugh Jackman and Ryan Reynolds and fucking Kevin Liu and all my friends over there at Marvel Studios. I miss them, but I don't work there anymore because I'm in charge like Kevin Feige, but better. That's what he's saying. That's what he's saying, pussy. Congrats. Fuck you, you pretentious piece of shit. Fucking thinks he's better than everybody over there. Oh, yeah, yeah. Congratulations on your movie. Fuck you. You wish just Superman's going to make $206 million on the first weekend. Superman's going to make shit the first weekend. $40 million. Fuck you, James Gunn. You ain't doing nothing. DC is dead in the water. The first movie you release, DC is dead in the water with the first shit you're going to release. And then all the other ass that you filmed, Zaslav is going to be like, you know what? Fuck you. Throw it in the trash just like Batgirl. We're not showing it anymore. 
Yeah, yeah, that's what's gonna happen, James Gunn. I'm predicting the future, son of a bitch. Give us a copyright strike, you dick. Anyways, some more DC ass from this piece of shit, Mr. James Gunn. I'm Steve Jobs, and I'm better than you. Now they're saying the casting call for the Green Lanterns. They're asking for Hal Jordan to be in his 40s, somewhere in the 40-year-olds version, you know? And they want Jon Stewart to be in his 30s, a little younger. And they're actually going to have the story to be that Hal Jordan, who is the more experienced one, is teaching uh, fucking Jon Stewart how to be the Green Lantern in the Green Lantern Corps. It's shit. Oh, Mr. James Gunn. You're a fucking dumbass. And this is never going to see the light of day because you're getting canceled as soon as your Superman film premieres. Fuck you, James Gunn. Fuck this Green Lantern and fuck your whole DC universe and your goddamn stupid piece of shit little shirt you're wearing and you can't even take a fucking selfie the right way, you dumb dumbass. It's all blurry and shit, you idiot. You're lucky people found a website to fucking buy that ass. How much did it cost? $57 for that piece of shit. Fuck you, James Gunn. Plus shipping. Plus shipping and handling. Fuck you, James Gunn. We're done with his asshole. Piece of shit. Speaking of ass, here's a big ass. Well, not, not spoilers, but the big pile of ass coming straight out of the fucking mouth of Kathleen Kennedy. Or more of the fucking piece of shit brain of her dumb ass. Here's the first official image, because we showed you some spoilers last week, but here it is, finally in HD, shown to the public. Of the Skeleton Crew! This is going to be a show for fucking kids. <sighs> Star Wars. This is where we're at. Fucking Barney. An episode of fucking Barney. This is where Star Wars is at right now. We are now an episode of fucking Barney. And fucking Jude Law's there. Hey, kids, uh, how can I help you? I am the only adult on this series, and I will make sure you will be safe. And not raped or molested by predators. Yeah, yeah, there's Baby Bob and fucking Timmy over there with his curly hair, a little Mexican. Hola, me llamo Timmy. And shit. Ah, uh, the little white girl didn't want to show her fucking blue reptilian eyes, so they gotta put a fucking Star Trek visor on her. The wrong universe, Kathleen Kennedy, you dumbass. <sighs> And why does this little white girl, little brunette there, look so fucking normal? She doesn't even look like she's part of the Star Wars universe. It looked like she's just on a tour of Disney and she just stepped right in the camera when they took the picture. Fucking shit. <sighs> Here's another show that I am not looking forward to watching or reviewing. Just like the Acolyte. But we're going to do it because, you know, you rather have me do it than you watch it. Because why watch ass when you can just watch an asshole talk about how ass it is. Right? That's what this is all about. <sighs> Anyways. Barney. Skeleton Crew. The episode. Right here. For everyone to know. Fuck you, Kathleen Kennedy. Fuck you. You destroyed Star Wars. Ah. Good night, Larry Land 97. Thank you for being here. Be safe. Not you, Kathleen Kennedy. Oh my god. All right, today, fellas. Here we go. We're going to get into the good stuff. The good Marvel ass. But here we go. Today, they announced their new slate. For the next three years. Subject to change. Ah, we'll get into that. Next year, because the only movie we get in this year from Marvel is Deadpool Wolverine. That's it. We're not getting ass. We're going to get Sony's Craven the Hunter. That's going to be another failure. Uh, but that has nothing to do with the MCU, thank God. No, 
We're going to get Captain America Brave New World with Anthony Mackie pissed off in every scene because they never gave him a script and he hates the movie. And all these worked in reshoots and new characters and all this splicing and editing from a movie that was pretty much shot four times. Uh, and it's going to be horrible. A big horrible fucking mess comes out February the 14th, everybody, next year. Captain America Brave New World. Black. Captain, Captain America Anthony Mackie. And then on May 2nd, uh, no one gives a fuck about this, and they haven't shown nothing. Thunderbolts. Big ass. No tits. Florence, Florence Pugh. She's hot as fuck, by the way. I don't give a fuck. She got no titties. She got a nice little ass. Big, 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 big. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, May 2nd, Thunderbolts. The Fantastic Four. First Steps. We'll keep coming out July 25th. All right, summer, summer movie for the families. Get out there and shit. You know, here's some for you, some cookies, some fucking popcorn buckets in the shape of the thing, some ass for you. Spend some fifty fifty seven dollars on that ass. July twenty fifth. Look forward to that. November seventh of twenty twenty five. We're gonna get Blade, supposedly. I highly doubt that. I'll tell you why I highly doubt that. Because Captain America is already a fucking $400 million piece of ass that has been shot four times. At least has been already finished, supposedly. The Thunderbolts, and they're just about to finish shooting. Fantastic Four, they're starting shooting. And Blade currently doesn't have a director. Doesn't have a script. And Mahersha Ali might fucking quit. So I don't think Blade's coming out... November 7th, 2025, regardless of what Marvel said today. That's all I'm saying. I don't think it's happening. Then the following year, in 2026, we're getting a mysterious movie. February the 13th. It's either going to be a Doctor Strange movie, or it's going to be a Spider-Man movie. The reason I'm saying that is because it needs to connect... To the next movie. It absolutely needs to connect to the following movie. Which is on May the 1st. For Avengers Doomsday. With our DJ. We talked about it last week. Then after that. On July 26th. We get another mysterious movie. So I think on 2026. And it could be either or. It's going to be. Doctor Strange and Spider-Man. I just don't know, you know, one of them will take place in February and the other one in July. I think Doctor Strange will probably be in February because that should lead more into Doomsday, the incursions. And then the Spider-Man movie should be in July because that's a summer movie. Come on, Spider-Man's always a summer movie. And that should lead into Secret Wars, which will come out on May 27th of the following year, 2027. That's three years from now, fellas. We all might be, we might be dead, all right? Who knows? Kamala Harris might win president, and she might fucking, you know, fucking press, I don't know, fuck this country over worse than Joe Biden did. That's all I'm going to say. We all might we'll all be thrown into camps and in jail and shit, because we're brown. She doesn't like brown people. Let it be known. Um, then we get two more movies. Who knows what it's going to be? After Secret Wars, there's probably going to be X-Men movies. I mean, what else could it fucking be? It's, it's, that's the, that's the reset. That's 100% the reset. After Secret Wars is the reset. So, we'll see how that goes. This is what the next uh, few years supposedly looks like. I still don't think Blade will be coming out November 7th. I, I honestly don't. They don't have a director. They don't have a script. They're rewriting it right now with two different people now rewriting it because apparently one person cannot be created enough. They got to get two dumbasses to do it. I guess so. I mean, the logic, you know, it makes sense. It makes sense. Two idiots are better than one. That's what they say. Uh, yeah, ass. I'll tell you what wasn't ass and everybody's been excited about. If you haven't seen it, I don't know why the fuck you're not there yet. Depot Wolverine is a hit. We all knew it was going to be a hit because it's a Radio R movie and Ryan Reynolds was in charge of it and there's no way in hell that Feige or Marvel was going to say no to Ryan Reynolds. It's a gold mine. All right. 
and Hugh Jackman added to the mix, and then Pretty Boy Chris Evans, which, by the way, needs to start working out again. Because that suit is giving them the muscles. That motherfucker, as soon as he left the MCU, he stopped working out and got skinny and small. What a damn shame. If you're coming back as Captain America, you better be big again, motherfucker. That's all I'm going to say. None of this padding suits and shit. Anyways, this was this morning. I haven't checked it. It might be over 600 million already. But at the very least, it's, it's going to hit 600 million by tomorrow. Um, 600 million in the first week? You know, the... I don't even think the first Avengers movie did that. Oh, no. I think it was better than... The, this is this is probably up there in the Disney... The, 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 the you know, back when... I think... Uh, I want to say the Avengers had half... Half a million, like 500 by like Monday... Or Tuesday of that week when it came out. But this one's fucking a lot of fucking money. Uh, it's making a lot of money and everybody's loving this fucking movie. I am. Um, I mean, I, I, I've been watching. I, I didn't go pay for this. Uh, but I, I downloaded the really high quality version from that YouTube that that guy uploaded. It was badass. Uh, but if you haven't seen it, then you better click away right now because I'm going to talk about some spoilers. Ryan Reynolds posted this, so it shouldn't be a spoiler. But he did post about the future of Deadpool. And that scene that was shown in the movie where I told you there's a scene where on the TV, Deadpool sees that he's dying and Thor is holding him. And Thor has scars and shit. And uh, to be perfectly honest with you, it kind of doesn't look like Thor. It looks like his... It looks like his fucking brother. I don't know, man. I've, I've watched the movie over and over. To me, it doesn't look like Chris Hensworth. Maybe he's, I don't know. It's just a weird, weird way, the angle. I don't know. But Ryan Reynolds posted this and he put, I know why Thor was crying and I can't unknow it. Well, it's, I don't know. I mean, I know why Thor is dying. I mean, why he's crying because Deadpool just sacrificed himself or he's about to die or some bullshit. But some guy posted this on Twitter and I thought it was genius. And he said, what if during this moment, Deadpool leans over to Thor and tells him, I have a secret to tell you. I was Noob Master 69. Oh my god, that would be hilarious. If he leans over and tells him I was Noob Master 69, the troll that would fuck with you guys on Fortnite. <laughs> From the fucking Avengers movie. <laughs> That'd be badass, but Marvel's not that smart. Unfortunately. Oh well. This has gotten a lot of success, and it's going to continue to be successful. And uh, this is not the last of Deadpool Wolverine we're going to see. So a lot of Easter eggs, a lot of goodies. If you haven't seen it, go watch it. It's amazing. Uh, yeah, I know you don't like it, cunt. I know, I know. We don't all have to like the same things. But we do have to live in the same planet. They finally said something, some kind of update after five. No, was it five? Four. After four fucking years, all of a sudden. Oh, we just found a director for the Vision show. Holy shit. I forgot there was even a Vision in the MCU. I'm not even playing. I forgot any of that shit happened. It was like someone had deleted out of my brain. I forgot there was a white vision. I forgot that the other vision died. And that this is just the memories or, or what uploaded into his head or some sh I, I forgot all of that had happened. All of it. And, 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 and barely. Oh, we found a director. This guy, Terry Metalis or whatever. He did Picard season three. And since Kevin Feige's a fucking Star trek -y nerd... And he saw Picard season three. So he's like, I loved it. And he hired this fucking guy to do the vision show for the Disney Plus and ass. 
I don't care. I don't care. So much fucking time has passed. It's fucking ridiculous that somehow these fucking people still expect us to care. Back then, each movie would connect to each other and, and shit and a half. And I thought the shows were going to connect to movies and shit and ass. And right now, everything's a shambo and a mess. And everything's left. There's no, like, the stories were left on no answer. The Eternals are missing. Fucking what happened to Shang-Chi. All of this shit's never explained. I don't care anymore. You have ruined your ability to make money. And the only money you're going to take from, from people are when, when RDJ is in those movies. This is a, another $200 million failure because, because people don't care anymore. People don't even... I didn't even remember that this had happened. And, and that's how people are going to feel when, when they fucking see the show. Oh, yeah, there was a vision. Man, I don't care. That's what it's going to be like. Because they're not going to come out next year. They barely found director. They probably haven't even written the goddamn show. They better be happy or lucky that fucking, uh, that, 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 uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, see, I don't even remember the actor. Paul Bettany. They better pray and that Paul Bettany doesn't fucking die or something and all of a sudden they don't have the goddamn actor and shit. Fucking idiots. Anyways, we're moving on from this shit. And thank you, Deepos, for being here. <laughs> we read all your comments, you son of a bitch. Cheers, motherfucker. And you know what it is. Live. <sighs> Happy Friday, man. Thank you for being here, motherfucker. You know what it is, motherfucker. Thank you all for being here. Uh no, I already took I already took my shots of tequila earlier. Uh I don't I don't want to take any more. Uh because I might throw up here on the live stream. Uh but I'm good, motherfucker, believe me. Ah oh, yeah. Anyways, let's keep it going. Let's keep it going, fellas. We got a lot more ass to go through. Apparently, this past Comic Con we found out that Giancarlo Esposito's character is really Sidewinder. Seth Volker, the actual founder and leader of the Serpent Society. That was announced at Comic-Con. So it's true. What? Why is his character... By the way, it looks nothing like... The, this looks like an actual lizard. He's got scales and his face is deformed. He looks like a scroll, but black. And he's got a horn on his head. He just looks like a black dude. With fucking knives. The only, I mean, he you know, look nothing his costume at all. I mean, I don't even know. They just fucking Feige's all like, let's just hit, let him be him. Whatever. Fucking stupid. But here's the stupid part: is that supposedly the entire part of the Serpent Society is cut out of the movie. Seth Rollins and all those other actors who were going to play all the fucking Serpent Society and all the scenes they filmed fighting Anthony Mackie. Everything was cut out of the movie and thrown away. So why make the leader of the Serpent Society be this character? If you cut out the Serpent Society from the movie. No fucking sense. Another failure. In the comic books, and I don't know if this is going to happen in the movies, but in the comic books, the cape that he has right there, he can teleport with it. He can just wrap himself around it and teleport like fucking Nightcrawler somewhere else. And he can, if someone's next to him, if he just wraps him around with it, he can, they both can teleport. I don't know if his jacket that he's wearing, if that's the, you know, the trench coat that he's wearing, is that what that's going to be? Like, I, it just doesn't make any sense why he's that character. It doesn't make any sense. And it just goes to show you how bad this movie's going to suck because this is a brand new thing they're adding to the movie. This is from the reshoots. Giancarlo Esposito had not been in the movie at all. The past three reshoots and before the Anthony Mackie, all that. He had was never in the movie. They just barely added him right now in the fucking and filmed all these scenes and shit. So, 
Unless they're going to bring back all the scenes of the Serpent Society that they cut out and put them back in the movie. He's going to make no fucking sense moving forward on this. Because what? You have the leader of the Serpent Society who doesn't look like the leader of the Serpent Society. And he's not even going to have powers or nothing. He's just a, a, a black old man with knives and shit and guns. God damn it. Look, I'm not... You know, I like Giancarlo. I think he's the one sick, fucking tremendous, amazing actor. I respect him for all the shit he's done. I loved him. The boys. The boys. The boys is awesome. I loved him there. But this is just fucking... Uh, embarrassing. Kevin Feige has completely lost, lost his touch. And I'm glad the Russo brothers can come back and finally maybe write some fucking good stories. And maybe fix some of this continuity for it to make sense. Because this is just fucking just trash. This sloppy, sloppy. Just like somebody, like a baby with, with paints. Just going like that on the wall. That That's what, what this is. God damn it. Uh, all right, moving on. Because Jennifer Gardner was excited. She got to be the very first uh, Comic-Con. She got to go to her very first Comic-Con. Because back then, when they did the Elektra and the Daredevil movie, I, I don't know, Marvel didn't go to Comic-Con or didn't have no shit. And she never got to go. And this, she for Deadpool Wolverine, she got to attend her very first fucking Comic-Con. And boy, was she excited. She went out there and came out and shit. But she also had her very first Comic-Con uh, I would say, uh, kind of ruined, at least for an hour and a half. <laughs> Here's a video of what happened to her there at Comic-Con. And I gotta tell you, man, I don't think I would be as happy as she is in all these videos I'm about to show you with the situation. I wouldn't think I would be that calm or happy about it. Um, so props to her. Here we go. You guys, um, we're stuck on this elevator. I need, um, <laughs> could use no a, one I could use a Wolverine, I could use a Deadpool, I could use someone. We've take the stair once we, yeah, we're back. looking for stairs. They just gotta reset it through this okay. to go up. Thanks for having us here, my first Comic-Con. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bye for now. We're 11 minutes into just our people. elevator sit. Don't cut the blue wire, is what we're hearing. I think I heard on an episode of like The Office or Brooklyn Nine Nine or something, you're supposed to sit, so we're sitting. Hey, Bottles of beer on the wall, and I'm gonna have bottles of beer. We're 45 minutes in. We're calling that. Yeah, we're, we're stuck in the elevator in San Diego. It's already been like 45 minutes. Good. We're, we're at about an hour. If we're beeping now. We have lights back on. Okay, everybody, come on. Good vibes, good vibes. Everybody positive vibes. Wow, man, an hour and 12 minutes. You know what was fucking stupid of them? Is if you fucking, you know, paying attention, they didn't call 911 till they were there for 45 minutes. I would have been like calling 911 right away. 
And it's like, these nerds here, nobody's gonna know how to fix an elevator here. Let me call the janitor. He might know how to... They're telling him, cut the blue wire from it. Fuck you. Call the fire department. They'll get it open like that. You fucking idiots. They took 45 minutes to call for real, actual help. Men with crowbars and fucking big muscles and six-pack abs and shit. You call them, they'll come, you know, move stuff and furniture out of your house and two, you know, for a, for a few, few few hundred dollars and shit. Oh, yeah, some of them might dance for you, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> God damn it, man. I don't think I would be happy. If I was rich and famous, a celebrity like this, I would have been pissed. I would have been yelling at everybody, my assistant over there. You better make sure this fucking door is open in the next five minutes because I need to take a shit in four minutes. And I'm going to do it right here in front of all of you. That's what I would have said. I'll tell you, motherfucker, that door would have been open like that. Aw, yeah. Yeah, yeah. She's very, very happy and very cheerful to be there. You're right. Oh, Brime the world is pumpkin patch motherfuckers here! Cheers! <laughs> Thank you for being here, you fucking, uh, you guy. You go after all those, those predators and keep them off the internet. The motherfucker's a fucking a fighter for the motherfuckers. Um, anyways, poor Jennifer Gardner, man. Her first fucking Comic-Con experience, and this is what she gets. Uh... But, you know, like I said, man, I 100% give it up to her because she's very happy about it. And she's very cool. And that's a very, very long time to be waiting stuck in an elevator. I would have also been fucking having major fucking panic attacks and anxiety. And telling everybody, just stand back. Stand us, just get back. I need space. I need you to stand back away from me. I need more space. You're not far enough. Get back. I would have been yelling at that black dude, get back! I need more space! I would have been freaking out. I, I would have, I would have, for an hour. Fuck that. Uh, so hats off to her, man. Hats off to her, because, you know, at least she's, 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 she's on a, she's on a whole nother level when you can just say, eh, fuck it. Cheers to her. Um, I'll tell you who stole the show this weekend, and everybody saw it. She's on Valiums and Clone Open already. <laughs> this motherfucker. I'm getting fucking uh, notifications from Prime on Twitter. We're on a live show, Prime. Quit interrupting my social medias. <laughs> Anyways, um, I'll tell you who stole the show. Harrison Ford. This 83-year-old son of a bitch came out and started hulking out out there on stage. And he was, like, being all crazy and shit. He was also having the time of his life. This isn't his first Comic-Con. He's been there as other ass for Indiana Jones or some other ass. I don't know. He knows what this is. He knows that it's a bunch of ass that he knows nothing about. He knows it. And he's not afraid to let you know that he knows nothing about it. I love the interviews, especially at Comic-Con, when all these idiot nerds come up to this 83-year-old man and start asking him, oh, do you remember this episode in this comic book? And he's clueless about anything they're talking about. And I love his responses. Uh, here's, a, here's a few. I love this man. This man's a shit. What has been the biggest perk thus far of being part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe? We give you real money. <laughs> so Deadpool and Wolverine set up anchor beings, meaning if they die, the universe dies. Mm. So who do you think would be the anchor being of 616, the universe you're in? 616? I mean universe 616? Universe 616. Hey, I'm out of, I'm, I'm <laughs> out of my orbit. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, <laughs> poor old man, like, you know, there's a lot of these celebrities that don't know what the fuck is, is going on. Like, even Michael Keaton says, you know, because he was the vulture over here, and when he went to go do Batman in the Flash, uh, they were telling him the story, and he was just like, you know, I was just nodding, and I didn't know what the fuck they were they're trying to explain to me, universes and shit. And then uh, when they said, did you get it? And he goes, yeah. And he goes, I, I saw their faces all worried because I told them, 
But when do I fight the Hulk? <laughs> Batman versus the Hulk. And they were all like, oh shit. Uh, yeah, they don't know. They're just actors. So some of them don't even read the comics. They're like, ah, just give me the lines. I'll do it. I don't give a fuck. Um, and, you know, at his age and all the kids that he has with the, you know, the half his age fucking wife and shit. And he's got to make some money before he dies. This motherfucker says, I still got uh, two legs and two arms. Uh, I'm going to get out there and make some money for my family. And you got to respect a man like that. A provider for his uh, Nepo babies and shit. Give it up for him. I'll tell you somebody else who was excited that Harrison, Harrison Fort was there. None other than our very own black Captain America, Sam Wilson, Anthony Mackey. And you know how this guy does when he gets excited? He starts fucking dropping F-bombs. Here he is, folks. That's Harrison Ford! Tell Tom Holland! I got fucking Harrison! <laughs> How do how how does some of these guys not get in trouble? You know, like yeah, uh, it this is Disney on the other hand. You know, you're dropping f bombs, and I'm pretty sure there's families there with kids who paid money to see this ass. Uh, that's pretty insane. It's pretty insane. But you know, Anthony Mackie's a whole nother level. Uh, but if you listen there, he did say, "Tell Tom Holland that I have Harrison Ford," because there's been an ongoing rivalry between these two people. Uh, for years now, I think since since Tom Holland first came into the MCU, these guys have been digging at each other. But the way this all officially started in the public eye, because I'm pretty sure they were always just digging at each other behind the scenes. But when it culminated and turned into this thing where we, we have nowadays, it started off like this. And Tom Holland is savage in this. This is how it started originally. I need to watch this movie. You haven't seen Spider-Man Homecoming? <laughs> I haven't seen the Falcon. Oh, no, there isn't one. Sorry. That was fucking savage. Oh, I haven't seen the Falcon movie. Oh, wait, there isn't a Falcon movie. Oh, in front of people, too. Just fucking burned the shit out of him, bro. That was awesome. So, Mackie, ever since then, has been on the war path. And he, every chance he gets, you know, he tries to embarrass little Peter Parker. And these were some of the comments, compilation of comments that this guy said to reporters regarding Tom Holland, this fucking comic con. I didn't have a movie. And I said, well, you're not 5'11". <laughs> See what I'm talking about? I got a movie, but he ain't gonna be 5'11", though. <laughs> yes, Tom Holland. Oh, oh, you know what? You Sweet know what? young hey, Tom hey, Holland. Hey, he's a beautiful human being. But? I remember when I met him, he was a kid. He was 15 years old. Right. I kissed him on his forehead and I said, welcome to the family. I put him on my knee and I bounced him like a little beautiful human being. And I said, you know what, kid? I'm here for you. And he repaid that by trash talking you. He's the bad guy. You know what? You know what? what? I still love him. <laughs> it's like, what is the one thing you're so excited for? I'm excited for Tom Holland to see my movie. <laughs> Are you going to save him a seat next year at the premiere? He's my date to the premiere. Oh, is he? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. okay. So, uh, Zendaya or whatever you need to do, like come with your friend or something. Yeah. But he coming with me to the movie. Okay. He going to sit right there and he going to watch the movie. I'm going to watch him watch the movie. Does he get any popcorn or drinks? And then I'm going to get feedback. <laughs> I, I want I want an honest critique. Just a live. Oh, yeah, live stream. Okay. So, we're going to live feed whatever it's called whatever you 20 something's called <laughs> live insta feed sure yeah him yeah watching the movie and him giving feedback it's like a picture in picture no 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 i'm gonna sit next to him <laughs> yeah i want i want to hear what he got to say <laughs> uh, i like anthony mack he's a motherfucker uh yeah 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 his movie is gonna suck he knows it he knows it. Uh, I know they just have to put on a good face and shit. But you see all the promotional pictures and the backstage pictures. He's pissed in all those pictures. And all the rumors are true. Uh, they probably are. Uh, like I said, they've, they've filmed this movie four times over already. It's, it's over $400 million. It's a piece of ass. It's a big mess. 
he knows him. So, at least we still got the Avengers movies, like he said. But yeah, this rivalry will continue, and we will see if they actually Instagram this live, and, and Tom Holland there sitting next to him and shit. That'll be, that'll be, fucking be cool. Uh, at least there's some cool, fun stuff happening, you know, that happened. Uh, one thing that happened, and we kind of saw this live, we didn't see the trailer, but they did show them, and I was confused as to how or why this even happened, but they showed, you know, a Fantastic Four, First Steps. They showed them a sizzle reel, some kind of very short trailer, and I couldn't believe it because they literally had filmed for like two or three days, and then they're able to get that much footage to make something that fast with effects special effects already this was not unfinished shit this looked like polished um i couldn't believe it i was like whoever this director is he's on it he's on it at least he's not a lazy son of a bitch like james gunn who didn't have nothing ready to present uh this guy's on it and he ain't like taika watiti either that lazy piece of shit uh this guy's on it uh i just feel like this guy I don't know who it is, Matt Shankman or some ass like that. Uh, for a guy to have already something to show, and it's only been like two, three days, and something that looks really polished, I, I gotta give props to that, you know. Uh, but I'll show you some of the... Sh I can't show you the actual trailer because we'll definitely get copyrighted for that, and one more strike and we're deleted. But I'll show you snippets of it, and I'll show you some really good stuff here at the end. But basically, oh yeah, this is something they actually gave out or these little maps to people uh that's not official art that's actually fan art and it's pretty good which is why i put it there but they gave away these little maps and shit and what i wanted to show them about this little map is that they show the baxter building and it has a launch pad and in the movie or in the little thing that they showed they did show them being astronauts and they walk through this launch pad uh, out of the baxter building and they go onto the spaceship that you see right there. It looks like a like a, a dick up there. Not the one, not the car that's flying. The one above it, you see like you know the ship that looks like a dart. That's what they get into and fly into space. Um, and that's the Baxter. That's the Baxter, Baxter building. Uh, so you know what that looks like. Uh, that's what the Baxter building is gonna look like. And uh, that's the spaceship where they go into space. In the footage that they show. Reed Richards is teaching kids science and uh, equations and physics and stuff. And all the kids are like falling asleep. And he says, he, to wake them up, he says, okay, who wants to see something blow up? And all the kids are all like, yeah. And he presses a button and some fucking engine turns on, and makes a lot of fucking booms. And uh, the kids are all excited. But he, I guess he's some kind of teacher or some ass. Um, then we see uh, him and the invisible woman. Uh, just kind of talking to reporters and they're in their home and it looks really like retro future like like Jetsons it looks like the background where they're hanging out like the, their home it looks like it's Jetsons it looks like it's retro but futuristic it looks very like life action Jetsons that's what it looks like and uh, the reporters they're telling the reporters you know, we're a family first and foremost, and we always have dinner. We've always had dinner at exactly this time, all of us. He goes, Pete, they'll show up right now, and he's talking about Johnny and, and I guess, Ben Grimm. Um, I'm guessing they're talking to reporters about them going into space uh, before this happens. They say the movie will have time jumps where they're going to show us a quick origin, and then it'll time jump to them in the modern, you know. This isn't another universe. The Avengers, none of that shit exists. It's just they're, they're the only ones that exist in this, just so you know. So it'll time jump where they're now they're the Fantastic Four and already can use their powers and shit. But they say that when they time jump, they're not a team anymore. And everyone's doing their own thing. And it's not that when Galactus shows up that they're forced to get back together as a team. And shit. Uh, that's basically what they're saying. Um, we see them, like I said, being astronauts, They and we didn't see them using their powers or none of that. We just see them getting ready to go out into space, and uh, they Sue says something like, oh, my brother to the audience, you know, he's single or some shit like that. He looks like he has blonde hair. Here's some images they showed. 
That's what it's going to look like. That's supposed to be New York in their universe. It is very Jetson-like futuristic. That is the Fantastic Four car. It's very Jetson-like futuristic retro. It's what it looks like to me. Here it is, what I wanted to show you. The thing. This is the fucking thing that they have. And I think this will be the most comic accurate thing we've ever seen. Just It's just a silhouette. They're covering the shadow or whatever. But already I could tell he looks more like the thing than Michael Chiklis. He looks more like the thing than Josh Trank's ass and shit. Um... That's the only thing. And they're on a dating game. They were like on a dating game. And the girl says, I pick number three. And they zoom in on this shadowy figure, which is Ben Grimm. Um, they filmed this much in two, three days. It's fucking amazing. This director's... I don't know if this is going to be good, but this director's a fucking worker is all I'm going to say. Because like I said, so this looks polished. Here's the amazing part that I'm about to show you. Uh, okay, I'm zooming in on the thing here. But here's the amazing part. At the end, because they saw them going to space, you see Galactus. And it's such a quick fucking... Uh, I, I'm skipping ahead, but I just needed to show you this. Galactus looks so amazing. So fucking amazing. He looks like Galactus. He looks like Galactus. What else can you fucking say? He looks like a big giant human wearing armor. He looks fucking human. You see the mouth as he moves down. You see it's a human mouth. And you see a bit, bit of the nose. And you see that it has armor on over it. But you see the nose and it's a human nose. And obviously those eyes and right there the skin. It looks badass. And he's just peeking into the window of their fucking home. They didn't show Franklin Richards, but Franklin Richards is going to be here. And in the time jump, he'll already be grown up. It's shit. Um, Galactus is supposedly coming to Earth to find Franklin Richards. I don't know why. I have a theory that Franklin Richards is in this universe is Galactus's son. And the Fantastic Four found him in space and brought him back and raised him as their own. And he's really Galactus's son. That's my theory. I don't know what they're doing. They did say some spoilers for Galactus. And that is Galactus eats worlds. But this Galactus is different because this Galactus is the only one that exists in the whole multiverse. There's only one Galactus and that's this one. And that his power is not just what he has like the comic books that he devours worlds. But specifically... He can travel the multiverse and eat planets and worlds from other multiverses. And that's what he does. He just jumps from universe to universe eating planets and, and shit like that. And that's what they're going to say about him. Does that mean that they're gonna, that's how they're going to transfer him to the MCU? I don't even know what's going to happen. But, you know, we know that Galactus is going to be on here. And his Herald will not be the Silver Surfer. It'll be Nova, a, a girl. So we those were other spoilers we had told you before. I like the way that the, I mean, like I said, there was nothing as far as this wasn't really a trailer. It was just some quick fucking footage. Like I said, I'm very amazed and, and, and in awe of how much they actually showed uh, with it, them only filming for just a few days. And it looked polished. Of course, the film looks grainy because somebody's fucking shooting it from a cell phone. But I'm telling you, it looked really polished. It's far like it looks like it's finished. It's part of the movie. Um, we'll see when the trailer finally comes out. This is the third iteration of the Fantastic Four. No, the fourth, technically. Uh, and we'll see, Because the other one that from 1994, I think, that... Uh, Marvel and Disney have tried to erase off the internet. I have it. <laughs> I have that piece of shit. I downloaded it just to have it. Um, but yeah, this is the fourth iteration of Fantastic Four. And we will see if it's any better than the last three failures. 
Feige. You dumbass. Of course, we all heard the Russos are back. It's actually excited about it. But the gossip is their payday, fellas. Because these two sons of motherfuckers are both getting $80 million for both films. Fucking suckers. You idiots. They fucked up. $80 million for two movies? Fuck. Each of those movies is making a billion dollars. You could have very easily asked for $100 million for each movie. And not only that, but I would have been like, Hey, there's two of us. It better be $100 million for me for Avengers 5. $100 million for him for Avengers 5. And then $100 million for me for Avengers Secret Wars. And then another $100 million for him for Secret Wars. That's what I would have said. The dumbasses. They took $80 million for both movies and to split two ways. You idiots. You fucking idiots. Fucked up. Oh, my God. Because they got to do these two movies. They got to write them. They got to fucking direct them. Edit them. Uh, the, the make sure that the music synced and all the extra scenes and the reshoots and catering and all this ass they're in charge of. On top of that, he's also putting them in charge of making sure that every movie that's before them make sure that they go over there to their sets and read their scripts and make sure that they lead into your movies. So in other words, fix the shit that's wrong that we're doing. For 80 million? Fuck you! You idiots! Y'all fucked up bad. That is one of the worst deals anyone's ever made. You suckers. Oh my god. That is so much work. And they're gonna make so much more money than that shit. I said 100 million would have been fair. Like I said. For each of them. For each movie. Idiots. This is this pretty sad, sad news that these two guys, you can tell their faces. I mean, they got gypped. They really did. They, they have Mark written all over their face and Disney saw it. Yeah, just give them 80 million. They can, they can split it in half. It's exactly what they did. Fucking dicks. Whew. You're right, D-Post. All the budget does go to the actors. They have bad movies. Now, speaking of that, one man who's not as stupid as anyone, the great Robert Downey Jr., who had already made $100 million for Endgame, plus box office revenue. Yeah. This guy, for everything he's ever filmed before, before this deal, we're going to talk about his new deal. Everything he'd ever filmed in the MCU before, they killed him off. He's made at least $500 million from all the movies. Now that he still has those $500 million is another story because he probably spent a lot of it already. But he's made about that much money probably throughout those fucking movies. They're going to give him $50 million per film. Which is less than the 100 million he got for Endgame. Actually, I think it was 80 million or 100. It, it must have been. But anyway, it was more than 80 because of the commission. He got box office revenues, he actually did. But they're paying him 50 million for these movies per film. And now he's obviously going to come out in Doomsday and Secret Wars. But what people don't realize, he's also going to come out in Fantastic Four. And there is a loophole in this. Because he could come out and end of credit scenes and any of the other movies in between. And that's another $50 million in his pocket. Because that's still him being in the movie, being credited in the end of credit scene. That's another $50 million in his pocket. On top of this, he's getting... Uh, box office revenue. He's getting a percentage from ticket sales. And you know that every movie that he is going to be in 
is actually going to be successful, unlike all the other asses that have been coming out. Because people love this guy, and, and that's the only thing they miss from back then. The, old, the, the character everybody loved, they killed, and they put all these lesbians and motherfuckers that ruined everything. Um, so you know people are going to go fucking spend their money on him. And so he's going to make more than, let's just say he only comes out in three movies. He's going to make more than $150 million with all the revenue from the box office. On top of that, this motherfucker got out of Disney free private security motherfuckers a bunch of fucking huge arab fucking nephilim motherfuckers always protecting him everywhere he goes from now on with guns bulletproof vests and shit he's got private security now he's got a private jet give me one of those jets you have over there Igert. you have like 70 jets over there for all your fucking uh, actors and your fucking bullshit fucking jeffrey epstein island parties i want one of them jets and have it say RDJ in gold letters. Motherfucker. Give it that red Iron Man. Fucking hot rod red. On that fucking jet. Bitch. That's what he says. And. He asked for a trailer encampment. State of the art. Yep. From now on whenever he shoots one of these pieces of shit movies that he hates. It's going to be a whole, like, five or six trailers and just for him. A whole little city of trailers. Everything's there for him. Just for him. All the other actors are going to want to come hang out in his fucking trailers. I'll tell you that for sure. Ah, oh, 50 million. That's a lot of buzz balls. Oh, yeah. That is a lot of fucking buzz balls and shit. God damn it, RDJ is not a sucker or a mark like the Russo brothers. And this guy knows how to make deals. You want me to come back and save your company and make you billions of dollars? Give it all. I want it all. This motherfucker has made the biggest, most amazing comeback story of all time. You know, he went from being blackballed and blacklisted in Hollywood from being some kind of fucking heroin crack addict and shit to being the most desirable actor in Hollywood. So much that they're fucking throwing everything that he asks. Adam. Amazing. Amazing. Oh. I'll tell you one thing though. And I'm not lying when I say this. I'm happy for him, man. I don't think I mean he deserves it, you know. I do I do think he deserves it. You know, he's, he, he seems like a nice guy and he doesn't fucking like to voice his opinions on things and say, you better vote Democrat and fuck Trump and this and that and, and, and the movements and this and then these governments. Uh, he's not one of these people. All right. He's not there to be that person for you. He's there to entertain you. And I respect that from him more than anybody. Because I hate actors who think we care about their politics or their or where they stand on abortion or, or who they fuck their favorite rock band. The only thing I give a fuck is the character you play and the, and the shit you feed me to entertain me. As long as you're being a good entertainer, you don't need to fucking feed me anything else. I don't give a fuck about your opinions. And I've always felt that about actors. And I hate when they fucking get all political and shit. And God bless this man for being one of the few motherfuckers who is not like that. He knows that, hey, I'm here to entertain. And, and when they ask him questions on interviews, he's just like, I don't want to talk about it. Plain and simple. He's walked out on interviews because some guys have tried to pressure him. Are you Democrat? Are you liberal? He just got up and walked away. I thought we were talking about a movie. This is some other interview. So you guys, he walks away. Yeah. I'm not here to share my personal opinions, he says. Fuck you. I'm here to promote Avengers Doomsday because that's what they're paying me to do, you pussies. I love this man for that. I respect him for that. But he just screwed over Disney and Marvel so bad. So bad. And I'll tell you what. Because now that everybody knows what he's earning for these next movies. 50 million per film. 
plus commission or you know box office co revenue and then all these fucking perks what do you think chris evans scarlett yost and all these other cameos and actors and fucking guys you're going to get for Secret Wars from all the other old movies. What do you think they're going to ask you for now? They're like, oh, well, you gave him that. I want something too. And Disney's going to be backed up in a corner having to fucking pamper all these actors to have in that fucking movie. Tobey Maguire, Andrew Garfield, all these motherfuckers are going to be asking for shit just like Robert Downey. I want a jet too. I want a big state of the art encampment. I want box office revenue. I want, I want, I want. And Disney and Marvel are going to loathe the day. They got swindled by Robert Downey Jr. Oh, yeah! Cheers, our DJ! <laughs> All the profit they're going to make from these movies are just going to go back to the celebrities. <laughs> Fucking Disney's an idiot for doing this. At the very least, they should have never had told the fucking the, the news outlets the, the deals they made. A, I I was amazed that this information was like, oh, this is... And I was like, what? Like, why did they tell people what they're, made, what they're offering and giving them? That's the worst fucking thing you can do. Idiots. Uh, but tears to Robert Downey and his success. And hopefully forgiving us. At the very least, uh, a few good scenes... In the shitty movies that Marvel's going to release. Because who knows, man. He might be the only good part in the whole fucking story that they're going to tell us. Because who knows what it's going to be. It might all just be a bunch of fucking... There's so many characters that are going to be in this movie. It's ridiculous. They're, how are you... Uh, who, uh, this, I mean, the Russo Brothers did Infinity War. But there wasn't as many characters as there are now. And not only is it just the MCU characters, but it's the other universe case, the Fox characters now, and the fucking Fantastic Four. And I'm just like, I'm going to be amazed at, of what the Russo brothers do. And if they pull it off, I'm going to be really amazed at those two motherfuckers. Uh, they did get swindled in their deal. Uh, but we'll see. This is still two years away. We'll see. Uh, but I think I've done some... Uh, more than enough of my share of ranting for a Friday night, motherfuckers. I do appreciate all you motherfuckers for being here. And I want to give you some life advice before we officially uh, uh, cut this broadcast. I want to give you some life advice before we leave to take home for the evening. A life advice that I've been really, really taking to heart. And I can't stress this enough. Alright. And this is all proven through fucking quantum physics. Okay, I, I trust me it is. I saw a video and it all makes a lot of sense. All right, but none of this is real. None of this. I'm not real. You're not real. Nothing is real. Oh, we're in a fucking in the matrix in a simulation. You've heard this before and shit. All right, and this is just like a projection that you're putting out. And if you would just either focus on what you want. And focus. And, and not only just focus, because you need to also move towards that direction. Don't think you're just going to sit in your couch and you're going to win the lottery. You actually have to stand up and go to the store and buy a ticket to win it. All right? Like, that's how like, kind of it works. You can't just say, I want to do this. I want This is going to happen to me. No, you got to kind of move towards it. You got to move towards it or do stuff that moves towards it. But if you just fucking, you know, keep your mind there, it'll happen. All right. And the only reason why I'm saying is because, man, this week could have been the worst week of my fucking life. And I know it sounds a little weird what I'm saying, but you'll understand. I hope I could have had the worst week of my fucking life. Um, but I just, you know, I, I decided to feel a certain way. And, and things just fixed themselves. I decided that I wasn't going to feel the way I usually feel when these things happen. 
and I decided to feel different. And so I feel like this is a simulation and the simulation reacts to how you feel more than what you want. Because you might not want something bad to happen, but because you have that feeling that something bad's going to happen, something bad happens. This fucking game or matrix that we're in responds to our feelings. Not your thoughts and not your wants or desires. It responds to your feelings. So basically my life advice, what I'm trying to give you and, and try it out this week, is try to feel feel not only what you want but try to feel what it would be like if you already had what you wanted and try to feel that as much throughout the day put it in your head put it in your head what it feels like and i think you'll be very surprised some of the changes that'll happen around you i noticed really quick i was just like what i was like hmm so I think this thing we're in, it reacts to our feelings. And I'm just saying. Anyways, think about it. Or better yet, feel about it. I'll see you next week. What the fuck, man? Fucking running like lady, eh?